Hello guys, welcome back to Yamcha Sessions. Uh, this podcast is brought to you by Firel. Firel is led by MJ and his team. <coughs> Firel is led by MJ and his team on his YouTube channel, Firel. Uh, they have a podcast as well, Firel Podcast. So if you guys want to check that out, you should totally check it out. Their YouTube channel, bracket S. <laughs> YouTube ah. channels. <laughs> Talk about uh, financial literacy and also the stock market. Right, super yeah. important in today's climate. Yeah, man. Markets crashing, now's the time. Generational wealth, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so if you guys are interested in learning about financial literacy and investing, you should totally check it out. But if you want to dive deeper, right, check out their SIB course. So it's 247 US dollars for the entire course. Uh, I think market rate is around 5 to 10K ringgit. So 247 US dollars is about 1K ringgit. Totally worth it if you want to have an in-depth course on financial liter- literacy. Yep, and we've been through the course, so we can speak for it. It's pretty dope. It's pretty con. It's it's actually quite concise for what it is. It's yeah. concise, but also at the same time, it's dense. It is very dense. You can't just like treat it as white noise. You really have to pay attention. Yeah. But the key yeah. thing here is there is a ten-day refund, so it's risk-free. But I would like to encourage you to spend your time in going through this course because I think it's a lot of nuggets of information, okay? If you key in the code YCSSIB, when you check out, you get a 10% discount. If you're lazy, just like most of us, you would probably just click in the link in the description below. Definitely. Yeah. So, uh, hope you guys check out Viral's content, but I also hope you guys enjoy the rest of this podcast. I love you guys very much. Love you long, long time. Annyeong. Welcome back to Yamcha Sessions. Today we have uh, John Mansfield. He is a Patreon member as well. He A bit of context. So for the listeners and viewers, John commented on one of our videos, uh, the Toon M one in particular, and he, he asked about my personal views. John as well. I'm Jonathan over here. Uh, on my views of the Bumi Putra rights, which then I responded. He, we took the conversation off to the Patreon messages, if, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Correct. Yeah. correct yes. And then email. Yes, and so, then WhatsApp. Yeah, and then yeah. WhatsApp. <laughs> <laughs> so here we are today. I think a month and a half later, John has uh, flown all the way from the UK. Which part of the UK, John? London or...? Near London, it's a place called Basildon, which is a new town. It's an, oh. over, it's an overflow. It's near overflow from London after the Second World oh, War. Okay. They built council houses for Shit. your common folk. Cool. Okay, yeah. so uh, John has so generously flown all the way, but he says it's an excuse to have a holiday as well. True, true, <laughs> true. I enjoy Malaysia, so yeah. it is an excuse. So a bit of background, John. Um, mm. I know you have worked in Lotus Engineering. Not Lotus, The I don't know whether you know this, you know Tesco Malaysia? Yes, Tesco Malaysia. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's now Lotus Malaysia. Yeah, they built it out. Yeah. yeah, and it's under the CP group. So to not to be confused, you used to work in Lotus Engineering as in for the car. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So maybe, um, so usually when we have guests on, we want to know how they got into it. So I'm sure there is a history on how you got to Malaysia and how you started working here. Maybe you want to dabble on that a little bit well, first. Well, yeah, I'm, I, like most people, when they leave school, they don't know what they want to do. Fair. <laughs> Very so, yeah, Worldwide yeah. Ph- phenomenon. Yeah. And uh, so I got pushed into doing an engineering type job, which I had no particular skill or want to do. So I did a year of uh, trade school as part of the apprenticeship and I was pretty useless at trade school. Again, <laughs> if I'm being very, very, It's very okay, I can, I, can, then, I can tell I'm, I'm also then, of that sort. And yeah. then uh, after a couple of years at the company that I was working at, it's uh-huh. probably the worst apprentice they had, <laughs> they, they started to go out of business. They got government money to move to another part of the country. Oh shit, okay. So they laid us all off and I went to a union meeting and the guy was at Ford Motor Company in the union meeting. He said, well, you have to take an aptitude test and... It's up to you, you know, aptitude test, blah, blah. He says, but what I will do, I'll put your your, uh, your name down with the HR department. Mm-hmm. So they called me up. I took the aptitude test, which I apparently did really, really, really well in. Okay. As in they thought okay. I was going to be, you know, uh-huh. Mr. Ford. T- so Ford as in yeah, Ford, Ford Motors. Ford Motor Company, okay. yeah. And okay. then I went in there and I worked in the prototype shop. Then I got into the drawing office. And then I did what they called the Jack Anton's drawing class. It was, it was an internal training thing for six months okay. on top of college and so forth. And after that, 
I then applied for jobs to leave Fords, which is a bit bad, really, after they pull that money. I think training. it's okay. Yeah, it's not so, like you owe them your life or anything. So anyway, right? so I, I went off to America and then I oh. worked in America for a little while. Then I came back and I started mm. around doing not too much. And then I went off to- Wait, which part in the US though? Detroit. Detroit for General Motors. General Motors. The motor, the motor state, right? The Motor City. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It That's was all right. Cool. It was all. It was an adventure. I bought a six point six Trans Am gold coloured <laughs> car with two tops, and you know, and uh, you'd fit it right in. I think. Yeah, I did, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was just, it was. It was just part of the thing at the time. How long were you in the US? I was there for about a year. I came okay. back. My mum had cancer, so I came back and I lived in Ireland because my parents are Irish. And we had a house in Ireland. That's okay. Where I was in England. So I lived in Ireland for about a year or so, and then after. She died. Oh, sure. I went off sorry. Back, oh, that's all right. I went off to work in Spain. Oh, no, I wow. wanted to work in Germany for Mercedes Benz. And then they sent me to Spain, a place called Vitoria, which is a Basque part of Spain. Wow. They've got their own national language. John, you've lived an incredible life, my friend. <laughs> no, it was, it was interesting. They've got, they, at that time, they had a strike on and we had to go in because we were contractors. Uh-huh. We weren't Mercedes Benz staff. And it, yeah. was, it was all. And they had a, a thing called ETA, which was like a, a separatist group. And there was splurge all over the walls and there was police. Wow, and wow. I went in, the guy let off a bullet and went tranquillo. Oh my oh, Lord, Lord, dude, yeah, that's all, like Le Casa different. de Papel. <laughs> yeah, it was different, it was different. Oh, well, I left there and then I went to Spain again. I went to Barcelona for VW. I didn't actually, at that point in my time, at my life, I wasn't enjoying my job at all and I was drinking too much as well. So I oh, wasn't sure. doing myself any favours. And then uh, I left there, and then what did I do? I ended up back in America again. I ended up back Same in, in Detroit as well. Yeah, back in Detroit again. And then I got laid off. Someone didn't like me. I, was, I wasn't going to get laid off, but as a certain person went up and made a point of- Life happens. Me, getting laid off. So then I traveled around the world, and I came back again. I'd done like backpacking in New Zealand and Australia wow. and whatever. And then I went back to, to America, and I worked there for- the next 10 years, I suppose. Good Lord. Yeah, that's why I've got the wow. American passport. Because I, I, just as I was leaving, I, when I got the American citizenship and I got the passport, they sent, my company sent me to Germany as part of the American team in a place called Opel, which was owned by General Motors. And oh, I, was part, I, I was part of the American team in there. And now after that, I never actually went back and worked in America again. So I ended up getting the... The passport. The passport, so I could work in America. And then after that, <laughs> I never did. So wow. I, then um, I got I got contacted by Lotus to go to Malaysia. And then I was this was when? Out. Like what year? This is about 2000-ish. Oh. I'm going to come over here. And I had a couple of years, well, a year and a half, two So years. I'm assuming you had two decades-ish mm. of uh, automotive experience in Germany, Spain, the US, and yeah, in, yeah, not and then you traveling. moved to Malaysia in the year two thousand. Yeah, yeah, I moved to Malaysia. It was part of the Lotus thing. We were working for Proton, really. We were okay. We had our own technical center in Bukit Jalil. Oh uh, shit! So and then by. hits home. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then we had the the one in Shalom, which was the Proton one, and it was sort of split between the two. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And uh, and I, you were based in the Shalom one or in the Bukit Jalil one? Or? Well, at different times. Both. Oh, where were Proton you Proton. staying at the time? I was staying at Sunway Lagoon, actually. I had a what the fuck? <laughs> Sunway Lagoon? Yeah. I guess it's near Sha'alam. It's the midway point, right? Midway point, it was, yeah. It was, yeah, you could get from there. I mean, if I wanted to get to Bukit Jalil particularly, you could just get jump jump on the freeway. And yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. didn't mind paying, and you could be at Bukit Jalil in 15, 15, 15, minutes, 15 yeah. 20 minutes. Yeah, more yeah. or less. Okay, so you were contacted by Lotus Malaysia to come. Yeah, yeah. yeah what yeah, was your yeah, role yeah. at the time when they contacted you to come uh, over? Well, they called me some fancy title or other. Some fancy title. It was, it was. It was like a management title, but I I forget. Like, as I said, I had lots of, I've had lots of fancy titles and not so fancy titles. I forget what it was called. Anyway, I ended up in charge of training. Okay. A guy left and uh, they put me in charge of training. It didn't go well. There was a lot of politics going on and I had a few people who didn't like me. And as it works, it's like anything. Once they don't like you, I give it time. We and just you, had a conversation you like You don't this. like yeah. them either. To yeah. a point where this person, when he'd phone me, I wouldn't always answer the phone. That's how bad it got with me. Wow. Anyway, we but that's when... I was asked as part of the training thing to put a plan together for Lotus, for the training side of things. And that's when I decided the, the Sepang circuit, because I thought- Sepang, put, yeah? Yeah, Sepang, yeah. So we put to a company, 
it's owned by the Sipang at that time. I'm sure he mm. still is. He's, he's Matt here essentially bought you for the yeah. country with taxpayers' money. So <laughs> Basically. I, yeah. So uh, <laughs> I, I went there and then I said to him, could we open up a training centre at Sepang? Yeah. Because it's Lotus Motor Car Company. They've yeah. got a Formula One history. This is called Sepang F1. It's It was it such a weird of, time. I yeah. remember I was nine when it was year 2000 mm. and I remember that slow evolution into us being like an F1 hotspot of sorts. Yeah. I, I don't know whether you felt it. Oh, I did, yeah. You're right. Sure. You felt that yeah. whole presence of, oh shit, Malaysia's up and coming. And if I'm not mistaken, I think year 2000 is more or less the year KLCC was made. If I'm not, 1997 or year 2000. It's around the same time frame of Tun M. Yeah. When he was the prime minister. Oh yeah, he was prime minister. I think in 2001, is she, he, he resigned. Notice, yeah, he theoretically resigned. Yeah. And I remember yeah. at that time, a lot of us felt very proud to be a Malaysian. And that's when I think he started that whole Wawasan 2020, you know, Vision 2020 oh, around right, that right. Er, around that time. Yeah. And uh, I remember because my mom does events, she also planned a few Sepang related jobs. Oh, really? Yeah. So really? I, I, re I, I do recall that phase in my life where motorsport was the hot topic and F1 was a thing, right? And now they paid a lot of money to Bernie Eccleston to get the F1. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was called Sepang yeah, F1. Yeah. And Bernie Eccleston isn't the kind of guy who, who gives you things for free. So I'm sure <laughs> he said, it's, it's, a, it's a billion if you want to put it on. And if you want to call it, you know, F1, F1. Uh, make it two billion. And they obviously shook hands and said, okay. And it's strange because there was a transition, I think in 2010 to 2012, I don't know, the timeline could be mm. completely off, where then Singapore became an F1 thing. Did they yeah. really? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah the yeah. whole like part, the CBD of Singapore was transformed to retrofit F1. Yeah. And they would race around the city. And I thought, wow, what happened? I thought Malaysia was the go-to place for F1. That's what yeah, Singapore does. No, it was. I mean, there's competition between the two countries mm. in there because it was one country at one time. So this, it's like a, you know, well, it's a sibling, of, sibling rivalry. You know you know how it goes, guys. With sibling <laughs> yeah. Rivalry. So, yeah. So it's... Uh, but this no, isn't really a contest though. No. <laughs> I, I would have to say, in retrospect, I mean, I'd, I'd still be interested to see them utilise that as a, a university of sorts because you could, you've got the... Lotus is still here, albeit under... A, a Geely. Geely now, yeah, and then you've got DRB Highcom, blah blah blah. When I wanted to go and because I, I carried on trying to get it to happen with it without Lotus because Lotus weren't interested, that or the management weren't interested, and I couldn't get them to, to come with me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I went to Cranfield University, which just does master's degrees, and they were really interested in partnering. And all of the as soon as you mentioned Lotus in Britain, for example. You could get any university. No way. Are you yeah, serious? They, yeah, they were all interested in partnering into it. So I think that would still be the same. I mean, if you put the university up there and you say, we want prestigious universities to put courses on here on a global basis for Malaysians and overseas students, I think they still would. Where is the current hub, if you were to train to be in motorsports now? You, in motorsports now, you can go online, go motorsport university, England and you'll find there's probably 10 or 15 10 or 15 universities that do motorsport wow. related studies is the UK the hub then it, it is for Formula 1 still but I think you'll find it similar in America oh and now I don't know about the rest uh, of the, the rest of the world huh. but you do yeah they I mean it was starting then but now it, it was it's now common it I, wasn't 20, 20 odd years ago I have a friend who's on Sepang and all he says that you can do in Sepang is go fishing which is a shame because now you don't even do no. racing in it, Sepang. At the time, I went along to see the CEOs of the comp of, of Sepang and uh, I couldn't really get them to give me any costs. And then I talked to Mate's son who was also running it at the time. Cause was it Mukris or? Yeah, uh, Moksani. Oh, Moksan, okay. And uh, I talked to his PA of sorts. I didn't get to speak to him. Uh -huh. And uh, he said, that, I said initially, could we use the, the events hall where the journalists Go. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm and familiar. He, yeah, and he just said, "Well, no VIPs use that. They only use it like when MotoGP is on and yeah. Formula One." I said, "But we could work around that. We can. It's a 32 week academic year. Yeah, we you can, can clean, shift we, things around. We you can know? close it. And, but anyway, you. I think he was just putting me off. And then I did get an offer from Mcsani through him, and uh -huh. it, I think it was Lotus build the university at their own cost." They leased the land for 20 years and then the land and the building 
go back to, to. Sepang. Hmm. And I thought, that's not going to... I didn't even go to Lotus with that. <laughs> they ain't going to agree to that in a million yeah. years. So that was then. That's when Sepang was F1, and I suppose it was a premium thing. Now I'm guessing if it's no F1 and... I know, don't even know what yeah. Sepang is for. Well, I think you can go along... If, It'll be for Matt Rempitz instead of doing your, <laughs> instead of doing your, <laughs> Matt, your, your Matt Rempitz uh, on the streets. You go to Sepang, give them twenty. That is such a shame. And they let them rip, rip you yeah. run around on your car. But it, yeah, it is a shame. It's a shame that because it, it's a big thing. I mean, it must have cost a fortune to keep it up. It, it, and to I'm build pretty it. sure. Yeah, it yeah. is. It is, and if it's a bit of a white elephant, I still. I think it's also sad because once you pour so much money into it, you still need money to maintain it. Which, of course. Uh, yeah, which I think is the the curse of. It, of Malaysia, if you oh, look at it, it as a whole, right? Yeah. A lot of the buildings and the infrastructure yeah. here. That's why, in some ways, the the Singapore way of doing it was better because you can close it down for three yeah. months. You have your, your event, then you open it up again, and that's it. It's done. And you do maintain it because you maintain because they're public roads. So you maintain them. Meeting. So you do maintain them anyway. And so with Sepang, you maintain it. And it gets used for three days, but then the public doesn't use it for the rest of the year. So you've got a limited yeah. usability yeah. of it. Yeah. People still do events in Sepang it's because it's huge, but they don't really maximize. No, Moto, you know. G- Moto GP is still one, but they only use half the circuit for that. Oh. And then you've got lots of corporations, Toyo and blah, blah, blah. I, they do, they do, but they're small. They're, they're nothing like Formula One or Moto GP. I'm yeah. assuming you are also very, uh, you're a fan of the F1 then? No. Oh, you're not? No, I did it because I was part of Lotus. I was asked to put a training thing on like work out a training program. And I could have said, well, what we'll do is we'll train petite um, proton people in Katia. <laughs> and, and, you know. And you they, could have said that. Yeah, yeah. And they would have probably been happier with that, actually. But I was probably being a bit over ambitious when I said, well, why don't we do it properly? They probably thought I'm, I'm trying to build an empire. But I was looking at it as. Potential. Sepang, yeah, Sepang's only up the road from where we were, Bukit Jalil. Yeah. Only up the road, brother. Well, it's, yeah, quite, so it's quite a distance, yeah. But, yeah. but, but, <laughs> but, but we had a Formula One background. We could get all the elite uh, yeah. universities to get involved in it. And then we had a, an F1 track. And then it was. It still was only being used partially. For yeah. main events, it was getting used for a week yeah. for Formula One, a week for OGP, and then there was other stuff. And I just thought, well, why don't they, if they put it up, they could, they could use it all the year round. It'd be a win-win. I find it quite strange mm. because even at that time, I re- I recall our our government being somewhat stable, and yeah. it was somewhat well, successful compared to now. Obviously, yeah, but I need, right, yeah. like mid two thousands ish, two thousand to two thousand five. I think it was a quite a good time for us, right? Or was it? Th- I know two thousand eight was uh, the financial crisis. Oh, I, I think it was yeah, pre- two thousand probably yeah. perceived stability. I suppose yeah. I, I don't know what was yeah. happening. But in the nineties is when you had a big a big. Or well, nineties as well. Yeah, that's when Amwar and Mahatia fell out over. You know, one one wanted to go one way to cure the economy, and uh-huh. one wanted to go the other way, and it didn't end well for, <laughs> for Amwar really. I <laughs> but, uh, at the time, I was speaking to my friend, and he yeah. was like, uh, he was at the Sungai Bulo rally. And he was saying how Anwar was there. He's like, I lived in Sungai Buloh for so long. And actually he was living in the prison for so yeah. long. Yeah, Sungai Buloh prison. Yeah, yeah, that was harsh. It yeah, was. man. It was. I feel, I feel like in Sepang, it could have been a lot more. But at the same time, when you were tasked for this project, right? Now, that this, this is, I was tasked to, to do a, a business plan. Yeah, yeah for, for that project. Yeah, yeah but that, I, that project wasn't part of the business plan. The pre- that, that I wasn't. I was in charge of training. They didn't say what I had to do. Oh, they didn't and give you a clear. No, no, no. But I thought, right, if you're going to give me a clear hand, then this is what I'm going to do. I thought, utilize the Lotus brand. We are Lotus. Utilize the fact that we can get all the best universities in the world to come on board. Mm. U- utilize the fact that they've gone and built this spanking brand new F1 mm. CPANG place. Stick a university in there as well. Utilize that for, and then you can get the students. Like when it comes to event management time, when they have yeah. these events, then on. you can shift things around. Yeah, well, you can also go to the students. Right, you're going to be working this weekend if you want to. For John, John's company's doing yeah. event management. They want people to to Do clean something. out the bins, right? Put yeah. the chairs out, put a few mics out when they talk to the Formula One totally guys. Totally doable. So, so then they they volunteer. They get a pass to go. I, I did this in America. I, I used to do it for a car. Oh. In uh, Belle Isle. Belle Isle is a little island of Detroit, and they uh-huh. used to do kart racing. 
And for a few years, I used to do that. I'd get a free pass. I could go anywhere. You'd see Andretti. And wow. He had a, I was a famous famous actor who used to do it as well. He died. He was married to an actor. Anyway, he was, his name will come back. <laughs> but you'd see, you'd see people that you'd seen on television there. But you could go anywhere. But you then had to go and put chairs out for people. or You, you had, had to, to do a simple volunteer pick up, Yeah, pick yeah. up dustbins. And, do yeah. you think, Drew, like, this is a potential for a lot of schools today, like in Taylor's University, help and all that, to somewhat take advantage of SAPA? I think so. I, I think it's a, it's an opportunity. I, I don't know if it'll be groundbreaking in the grand scheme of things. Well, they don't have the Formula One anymore as well, eh? Yeah. But um, if they did, know. though, yeah, you get some, you get some social credit mm. on a national maybe, level. Maybe the reason why it didn't happen is is there's not a lot of interest in motorsport. But at that time, it was, though. I no, remember no. a lot of people were... Yeah, no, I think if the right people had said yes, it would have happened. It's just that I was having trouble locally with my management. At, unusual for me, of course, at Lotus. <laughs> so that wasn't going well. But I, I went to the ASEAN uh, Automotive Conference and I was on stage and beside me was Moxani, or whatever his, yeah. his letters are before his yeah. email. And uh, I had the ex-CEO of Proton as well, Tenku Mahalil. And I was talking to Tenku Mahalil and he says, if you'd come and told me, he said, I would have had a chat. He said, that was quite a good idea. But I couldn't because I had to go through my my line management right. at Lotus. And if I'd left then and found out where his office was and knocked on his door and done it would it that have. way, I would have been instantly fired. As it was, I was kind of fired anyway, so it wouldn't have made any difference. <laughs> <laughs> but he, he, if he'd been involved, he knew Mahatia and he knew... He's the got connections. All the right yeah, and it probably would have happened. If he'd said, yeah, hey, this is a good idea. I'm glad I thought of it. Let's do this. Push me out of the way. He could have done it or he could have brought me along. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, it would have. But it's getting the right people to say yes. I didn't think it was a stupid idea. I think it's yeah. a it's a decent yeah. idea at the yeah. time, but it's just that now I don't know. It's no. so tough, right? Well, look, they've still got to use it for something. I mean, it does cost a fortune to keep it running. It still does, but then again, a lot of things yeah. in Malaysia have been built but not fully utilised, right? No, no, I agree. I think most, anything governmental it, it, around the world, sometimes they get, they're quite good at doing the old white elephant thing. They've got a big budget. They want to showcase what they can do with that budget. Yeah, yeah. They sometimes, it. So occasionally it works out and sometimes they end up with a, huge embarrassment on their hands. And Sepang is, is not a huge embarrassment, but it's not what it was intended to be. I think it continues yeah. to happen till today. If you look at yeah. KLCC, you look at that long, what t- super tall tower, I keep forgetting what it's called. Nara um, 118. Uh. Medica building. Uh, Medica building. I don't know. Have you been, you, you're staying in town right now, yeah, right? Yeah, there's so many, there's so many high rises. And there's no point, right? Because even till today, a lot of the high rises are not fully occupied. No. And yeah. to be honest with you, they've just gone and built, I'm staying in Bukit Bintang in, in the, mm. Times Square. And I walk out of Times Square, I walk for less than five minutes and I'm in another shopping mall they've just built with, with a Purdue Jail. Not, oh yeah, the Lalapot. Yeah, you go through that on a month, because I'm not working at the moment, so I go through there at like two o'clock on a Monday. Nobody, there's nobody. Nobody, you could get a gun, fire it, go bang, bang. <laughs> <laughs> no, John, that's chill, no, man. No, no, no. Yeah, it's, you wouldn't it's shoot my, no, it's my American, you know, side. <laughs> but you wouldn't shoot anyone, no. Because it's, it's so empty, it's, you would. It's you would, sad, right. yeah. And I went in there and I had a look at the the flats. They wanted a, a million for the small one and one point two million for the bigger one. And I don't think they've sold many of them. And uh, I doubt it. No. It's just not because you've you've got all these shopping malls all one by the other likes. That's right. Huh? Someone should do a little bit of like country planning. Say, well, if you've got one here, why would you build one five hundred yards away and another one five hundred yards away from that and another one five hundred yeah. yards away from that. Yeah, and yeah. Then, you know, we're all shopping on Alibaba and, and Amazon anyway. It's it's it's, it's 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 a shame. Yeah, yeah. It's not a good thing. But I, I hope it doesn't fail because it's they put a lot of effort into it. I mean, it is nice. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. It's just empty. Just it's a it's a entire waste. point. I think. Well, it's the entire yeah. yeah. It's wasted because I feel like there was no city planning ultimately. If you look at oh, no. the mall planning, mm. it's basically the the product of city planning, right? If they were to establish certain rules that you can't create malls all over the place or parks all over the place. But if you look at Singapore, because my, my dad, our dad mentions this a lot. If you look at, if you look at Singapore's city planning, mm. a lot of the malls are stationed at where the stations are. And because the public transportation there is so efficient and so good and so used, the malls are always going to be a hotspot because when people come back from work or go to work, they can get something to eat. 
They can get their clothes, whatever, from Uniqlo and makes whatever. Makes a ton of sense. It makes so much sense. But if you look at Malaysia, and it's funny because I was just discussing this with my friend Harith last night about how there are so many abandoned malls all over Well, it is Malaysia, a shame. Right? No, it's a shame, but I went to, because yeah. where I am is a shopping mall. Oh. When I come out of the apartment building and I walk into a shopping mall now, oh. which is the Jaya Times Square, then I trot over to the Laporte one and then I... Uh, I go across the street and I've got the See? Sogo, is it? Yeah. Yes, it's Sogo. Yeah. yeah. And then yeah. And the Pavilion seems to be doing all right. And I, I haven't been in Lot 10, but Pavilion, Lot 10, uh, another one, then Bajaya oh, Times Square, Square, then Laporte. La La They're all within oh. le- less than a kilometre of each other. A stone's throw away, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially the... the the Sogo, because I got a giant. Then they say Sogo. It's not called Sogo. It's called Sogo. I know Sogo. Sun, 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 Sun Go Wang. Sungai Sun Wang. Wang. Sogo is nearby as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. and then you've yeah, got the exactly then you've got point. the electronic place next door. Uh, yeah, Yat Plaza. Yeah, yeah, Low Yat Plaza. Yeah, I yeah. went up there. That's I mean that, but that's a bit unique, and it does have that's a lot of people. That's just only tech. Yeah, yeah. but uh, the, the, all the rest of them are empty because they're, they're feeding off each other's clients and. Why would you approve something like that? I have no idea. And I mean, especially with I don't online think shopping. Anyone is approving or rejecting it. That's the problem. It's just they own that land, so they think Somebody that Somebody has move. an incentive to approve it or to just let it go. Yeah, but I mean, if you own the land, why would you do it? You've just got to build yourself. If you're a commercial person, a commercial real estate person, why mm-hmm. would you build something that's going to fail? And you are if you do that. Well, I'm not saying it's going to fail. I hope it doesn't. I yeah. hope I'm proved wrong. But it looks, <laughs> it, it looks, looks like, it's like it, it looks like it's going to fail yes. at the moment. I'm fairly really sure well. it's failing. <laughs> when when yeah. was the last time you visited KL? Four years ago. Four, Four years, years ago. ago. And I've been on and off since 2020. I've come about, I don't know, probably about 10 times totally. Okay. okay. But normally, because I'd, I'd get myself invited to, not invited, or I'd, 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 get, I'd get into a conference, you know, okay, okay, and do it that way. But it was it was interesting because then I'd have the excuse to come over, and then I stayed at uh, at a hostel which is now closed, and I became friends with the people who were there, and then the people in the local area, oh. and it kind of became a little bit of a home from home. I was I slept in the baggage room, which sounds terrible. Well, that sounds quite but freaking was, sad, man. It was no, but it just kept the cost down. But it was nice. <laughs> it was actually nice. I had a bed in there, and it was cool. I mean, technically, you're out the whole day. So yeah. all you got to do is just go back and yeah. sleep, yeah. right? Yeah, and yeah. you—it was because it's an international hostel, if you mm. will. You meet tons of interesting people. You like do. the world you comes do. to you, as yeah. opposed to you. Even right, though I've, right. I've obviously come a long way to get there, <laughs> but that you've got all people in there all working, like as in Bali, like you yeah. know, your parents are, but they're doing diving, for example, yeah. dive instructors. But my, I, I'm always terrified when I stay in the hostel. Like I remember, yeah. I went to Manchester once. Yeah. And I brought my laptop with me because I was afraid to leave my laptop back in another hostel back in London. And I was like, oh shit. Well, if I you're in a dorm, really. yeah, if you're in a dorm, you don't know. I did, I mean, yeah. I actually had the, the route, well, other than people come in and put their bags in. Yeah. yeah. But uh, I had it to myself kind of thing. It was, be- it was actually better than being in a dorm. Yeah. But I do understand if you're in a dorm, you don't know who. It's a bit, yeah. Yeah, you don't know who's going Especially the it. context is you're living in Malaysia, right? So yeah. in Malaysia, it's kind of sketch. Like if you were to go to a safer country like Singapore or Japan or whatever, I think you'd be more or less. No, 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 no. I'll be honest with you. I mean, I, I, Tenget Tongshin did have its little, you know, like you've got your massage parlors and you've got the guys taking money for, rent, yeah. you know. If you want to park there, give me five ringgit or else I'll slash your tyre. <laughs> you've got all of that going on there. He knows but, shit, right? But, <laughs> you but, you but, know your shit, yeah. yeah. But if you're uh, in that hostel and the and you trust the owners of that hostel and they've got a certain amount of security, they, that wouldn't happen that way. Those guys off the street wouldn't come in. But that's there's no guarantee that you won't get a fellow backpacker who's well-educated, yeah. who sees a, right. a nice piece of IT or a, a nice Samsung phone who goes- And you don't know, right? Oh, I could take the SIM out of that and take yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you wouldn't know. They, they're not going to say, I've just stolen your phone, are they? Obviously. And they'll be gone the next day. Yeah. But my question as to why- Oh, no, sorry. The question as to why, uh, when was the last time you came back to KL is because uh, I was speaking to Jen- Jen's my my girlfriend. Right. But actually, by the time this podcast comes out, she's my fiance. Ooh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You were saying yeah. saucy. Yeah, man. Yeah. Uh, I think I spoke to her. If she doesn't say no now, he'll be. Fine. Oh, yeah. yeah uh, I don't know. I'd be very uh, entertained. Yeah. yeah, I would be as well. I'll be re watching this podcast, being like, wow, uh, look how that turned out. <laughs> Get a load of this guy. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I remember speaking to her friend. Her name is, his name is Jen. Right. So Jen, he's based in San Francisco. And okay. he came along, he came back to KL because he's from KL, but he's now living in the US with his mom there. So they migrated to the US. And he told me four years ago, KL looked so different. And I was like, are you sure? I think no, KL looked more or less the same. He's like, bro, KL looks like Hong Kong now, man. 
No, it's it is it. When I, I mean, obviously, I've been coming here longer than four years. Yeah. But I did a little, a quick little Facebook video yesterday when I was waiting to, to go to the political rally to see your friend T-T-T-O. Anna Yo. <laughs> Our friend Anna. Anna oh, she was on. She was on your like on your. Yeah, <laughs> buddy, all. <laughs> <You're fun. laughs> When I first used to go through there, up until about ten years ago, that was hawker stalls where I was taking that little video from. You'd get, you'd come out off the train, uh-huh. and then you'd you'd walk past the hawker stalls, and then you'd be out in Seb, Seb, Sam Bantham Road, the main road. Ah, some yeah, some yeah. Nothing. yeah, yeah. Now yeah. they're going to build a huge shopping mall there. See what I mean? But it's 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 a definitely a Malaysian thing. Shopping malls are definitely the. But that does get a little bit of footfall. I will admit that does get footfall. TTDI, yes, yeah, but yeah. I think if you look at KL as a whole, especially when you do drive around, yeah, legit, I feel like it is a tunnel of of buildings. Oh no, they 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 are putting up high rises all over the place. Do you feel that? Like when you're driving, yeah, yeah. right, along highways? Mm. And I only just just thought about this after speaking to Jen. He was saying how, bro, like KL looks like it's Hong Kong now. And it's because he used to go to Hong Kong a lot. And I didn't really put two and two together until after he said that. And when I was driving, I realized, like I am being like surrounded by high rises, condos, malls, and office buildings. And it really does feel as if everything is just enclosing I don't know. And he was saying how it's just so it's so packed now. Yeah, it's a shame. It is a shame. If you've got if you've got two or three level storied shops. That's all houses, right, I feel. Yeah, yeah. But when you just got loads and loads and loads of high rise buildings and it, and anyone says it's the second highest in Asia, it's gonna be the highest in yeah, Asia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like some kind of a competition, competition. yeah, to build right. big buildings. And you think, well, what's the point? There is no point. I, I there is no point. No, I don't I yeah. don't. I mean unless you really have a High density population, and you really have got people who want to live in them, be- and it's a necessity. Yeah, but I correct. don't think it is actually. I it's think, not, not in KL. I in Hong Kong, Kong, I would justify it. Yeah, it kind of makes sense yeah. there. In Hong Kong is packed. Urban centers in China, like yeah. Shanghai, Beijing, Shenzhen, mm. makes sense. KL, no man. Oh. Yeah. What's the population of KL? Like three million? <laughs> what? Sounds about right. Yeah. One right. Of the population. I think. Yeah. It's it's not that big, you know. And uh, I if you look at night and it's it's clear. Everything is dark. There are no lights. So it really makes you question, right? Like, are anybody even in these buildings that you're building? Well, some of them won't be. But you've got you've got to think that if you're a commercial builder, you must think of that before you put it up. I don't think they do. I think they think of maximum profit. If I build yeah, upon I, this square foot of land, right, this this many units, then I can I'm bound to get a profit I'm, compared to you know. No, I do understand the uh, the, the the thinking behind it. I do understand that. But if it's going to be empty and you've got to service that, you've still got to look it after it. You've got to yeah. make, the, make sure the lifts run and the blah, blah, you know, et cetera. So it's not it's like it's you can just leave it anyway. You, there's yeah. a certain amount of cost comes with that. Yeah. But there is no there is no upkeep of a lot of the buildings. So mm-hmm. I, I realised this only when I go to Singapore and I realise that a lot of the buildings that some high rise, some shop lots, but they're very clean. And if, if you look all across Asia, like Thailand, you know, in some places in Vietnam, the city centers ish, the 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 maintained buildings are the ones that look really clean, and I don't think KL has that. They don't really maintain the buildings. They don't really like repaint the buildings. They don't touch it up. Only Penang does a good job at doing that, and that's only certain parts of Penang. Which must mean whoever owns these commercial lots are not thinking whether or not it makes financial sense, right? Well, what, if you're going to put millions and millions and millions Surely in the building, you up should think about it. You would have thought. You would have thought at that. Yeah. I mean, it's not like you and me getting, you know, saying, "Well, how much, do you, how much money have you got?" We we'll just be, pull we, it together. Yeah, and we'll make a garden shed. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because that's the amount of money that we've. Yeah. If, if you if you can go to banks and and facilities and get millions upon millions to build those things, you would yeah. think that the lender, the bank, for example, would say. Does this sense. make commercial sense? Yeah. Can you pay me that money back? Yeah. That's right. That's right. You know, that, yeah. even at that level, and and someone's obviously said yes, you can, right? And ticked it off. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, it wouldn't happen. So that must mean we're all collectively idiots. Possibly, <laughs> possibly. <laughs> Two out of three of us at least. Uh, <laughs> right, right. But that's a majority. No, that, yeah. no, I don't. I don't know. But I feel it, it's it, doesn't, so it doesn't make sense on the on the surface of it, right? The poodoo doesn't, for example. That was. That's, I don't think it even know. made sense because. Uh, 
I understood that whole point of trying to bring a Japanese mall because Lala Port is a Japanese mall. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and they were trying to bring in like new names, and I feel like there is this competition, like you mentioned before, with Singapore of bringing big commercial names. So if you look at Singapore's Changi Airport, they have a what's what's that called? That burger place, Shake Shack. Yeah, right. they have Shake Shack, Fucking and in Shake Shack. <laughs> now I'm, I'm, I don't know. I'm not really up on burger places. Is Shake Shack's a, a bit of a prestige name in burgers? I think in the US it's a. Is in, it? Yeah, I wouldn't call it prestigious. Yeah, it's, it's, just, it's any other burger joint in the US, but right. in Southeast Asia, it's oh, it's something you. I used to eat in the US that I've never eaten in five years. Like burger and lobster. Do you know burger and lobster? I no, think oh, London has burger and lobster. Did they? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. I'm so, not as well up on stuff like that. All I know is your normal like McDonald's and KFC yeah. stuff. So they're trying to bring in big names, basically. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And then uh, if you look at Lala Port, they're trying to bring in big names as well to show, mm. to inspire confidence, I think, that, you know, we can bring big names to Malaysia as well. Yeah. I mean, the, 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 yeah, the grocery <laughs> start part of it is nice. I mean, and you can get a few things. Like I like planters peanuts mm. and you can, uh, that's the only place I've found that you can actually buy planters peanuts. For example, <laughs> the, not that that's a big deal to build a big shopping <laughs> mall so you can buy planters peanuts, but that's, that's, and it's got some nice little bread places where you can buy French rolls and stuff. It, I mean, it has got nice yeah. things in it, but it's still dead empty. It is. I mean, it's, yeah, that, yeah. that doesn't change. No, right. that doesn't change. So if you go back to Sepang, actually, like yeah. a lot of the entire infrastructure of Malaysia is the same. Well, they could have, I mean, hindsight is a wonderful thing, but when they were building Putrajaya, they could have done what Singapore's Oh done. my they God, could have, yeah. They could have actually put a circuit of sorts in Putrajaya yeah. and then made that their Formula One weekend spot. They so could have done also, so also much. Jaya. They could have done you so know. much with Putrajaya. But they, they do, I, I'm not sure it's super, if it's Putra or Cyber Jaya, but they do have E, Formula E, goes on the road around the- <laughs> oh, Yeah, I think you're right. They I do, think you're right. They have a Formula E or yeah, something. It's, it's, like a, it's like a second level- What like is Formula E? It's not- It's electric cars, as opposed to as opposed to what they call ice cars, internal combustion. Right, right. And Formula One, I'm assuming, will go into that space- It's at Putrajaya. Some point, at some point. Yeah, it's Putrajaya yeah. E Pre. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, Formula I mean, that is, that is the- uh, that is the few, I mean, in- in the UK, I think 2030, they're going to ban the sale of internal combustion cars. No way. And 2035 wow. Europe, I might have that wrong, but 2035 definitely. In Europe, they're not going to, it's going to be illegal to sell ice cars. Or no internal. way. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. At the moment, things change, you don't know. If they, if they keep having wars everywhere and then they just pragmatically might <laughs> yeah. say, okay, carry on with your ice cars. But yeah, but at the moment, at the moment, at the moment no. That's they, the they, plan. That, that is the plan, yeah. That is the plan. Wow. And so electric vehicles, 10 years from now, will be the thing to have, I assume. I mean, Malaysia's talking about, Proton said 2027, they're going to start building. That's right, yeah. Oh, is it? 2027? Yeah, which is a bit start late. Building. A yeah. little bit. But the thing is, if they're with Geely, and Geely already make loads of electric cars, they just have to say, can we borrow just your architecture? Right. Then we'll, the- we'll slap on the top, yeah. So they could, they could do it next year if they wanted to. At least they've got to learn how to do it and see what the market's like. I can see the market because you've got no infrastructure. Yeah. That's and if people live in high rises, you can't. You have to, you, you, yeah, you have to go and find somewhere to charge it. So they haven't got that at the moment. I think that's what's holding it up more. Than oh, that no, makes so not, much sense. Not knowing how to build one. I'm pretty sure Proton, if you put a gun to their engineer's head and said, <laughs> hey, hey, look, we need you to come out. Next car comes out in two years' time is, is electric. But it could be. How they is the? Be. How is it in the UK now when it comes to electronic cars? And is it is it more? Like, do you see it more now? No, it's still rare. It's still rare because and, I would assume and, that it's the same infrastructure there because a lot of people still aren't accustomed to that whole. No, no, car. that's right. And a lot of people don't like it because they're scared of not scared of the car per se, but. From the point of view, if you want to travel from here to Penang, mm-hmm. you know there's going to be Petronas or Shell. Oh, garages. you're confident, and right? Yeah, you're yeah, gonna, yeah, 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 yeah. You're going to get the, petro- <laughs> the petrol, or you you know. Yeah, yeah. Whereas if you've got an electric car, you're thinking, well, say all of the all the power has been taken up. Say there's four cars and they're already. And it oh, takes, I see, and, and you're waiting, takes, and it takes them an hour to fill up, and I go to the next one, and then then I run out of electricity halfway between stations, and they they call it range anxiety. Oh, range and anxiety. anxiety. It's a very real thing. Yeah, I think it will go yes. away over time. But in Malaysia, it's a big deal. If you've got landed property and you can afford to pay a couple of thousand ringgit, to a, you can get a wall charger put up in your house, then you can just charge overnight long. And and then pretty you're pretty safe unless you... Yeah, unless you go for a long yeah, distance long drive. Distance, yeah. 
But if you haven't got that, and then you you're, you're not confident that the infrastructure is there, that will put you off yeah. buying an electric that car. That is right? a lot of money, though, to to invest in it's, many stations like that. It is, but if it's if it's coming down the road, then I think you've got to invest in them. But the, the other thing is. In Malaysia, I might be wrong here, you guys know better than me, mm -hmm. but if the electric power plants are generally run on coal... They still are. Then you're just exchanging one fossil fuel for another. And it's the same shit. It's, well, yeah, you, could, you, could, you could say that. It's yeah. still combustible, though. What's the yeah. difference? Yeah. So, and that's that, so, so you've, you've got to start looking at other ways of producing the electricity, oh, which you can't do overnight. That's huge capital expenditure. To go to the Malaysian government... Can we swap that out for? Yeah, I don't know. Wind farms, solar farms, X turbines, farms, blams, yeah. yeah, yeah. And they say yes, but it will take four years or five years, and they would have to then cut a great big budget and encourage yeah. people to do that. I was listening to Joe Rogan, and he was saying how nuclear is actually the way to go. It's just that a lot of times people feel this hesitance with nuclear because of how un unsafe it is. Yeah, well, it, it is unsafe, but if if you do it properly, it's the best way. It is, but. But there's a war in Ukraine. They've got a nuclear power plant. Russia goes and gets a smart bomb and hits a nuclear power plant. Oh, they, they, shit. They don't need to have an, a, 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 any special bomb. You know, you don't have to be You just North need Korea. a tiny one, yeah. Yeah, you just have to have someone who's good at logistics and goes, I want to land it on there. And That's so it true. Is, it is dangerous. And then you've got earthquakes like in Japan. Oh. And then they had a, a radiation leak because the, the reactor Oshima, broke yeah. open. So it's... It, there is that side to it, but if you can get around that, and it's a big if, then it is the best, yeah. If you look at Malaysia, it, though, we are like completely best. free from any natural disasters apart from floods. And that's because you guys have, we, we just- Poor sewage systems. Yeah, it's yeah. just poor sewage systems, right? So right. technically we get, we built it on a hill <laughs> or on a mountain no, or something. No, you could do yeah. it. It's just getting rid of the waste at the end of the day. I mean, they're talking about, you've got SpaceX and you've got NASA uh -huh. and all these people. And all, co all the car companies are throwing up things into space now so you can do yeah. self-driving cars or whatever. And people are saying, well, can't you just get the nuclear waste? Say to Elon Musk, can we put it, <laughs> can we, can we, just you know. Just it all. Yeah, can we put it on one of your rockets and then aim it up towards space? And yet one day you, maybe you can, but I'm sure what goes up potentially comes down. Yeah, man. So and you don't want not, to pollute yeah, yeah. outside the earth as well. Yeah. Jesus, right? I, I mean, I'm, I'm obviously no scientist, right? Mm. But if you're, if an object is moving in a vacuum at a certain velocity, given that there's no friction because it's a vacuum, it should be moving in that same direction unless, naturally unless it hits something, right? Mm. So theoretically, given the fucking infinite expansion of the universe, right? You just propel something out there, right? Propel like 17,000 barrels of nuclear waste and call it a day. Okay, really? Well, <laughs> theoretically, yeah. yeah. But, I mean, there's all these satellites going around as well for like self-driving cars. Right. I mean, but they're all within... The, 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 the orbit of the Earth, and, yeah, they can, yeah. and at one time or another, they're all going to start coming down. Oh, those are going to come down for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's only. And a there's of no, time. there's no plan for them either. You know, I mean, they won't be quite as dangerous as an atomic nuclear right, cluster yeah. coming down and landing. But I mean, I wouldn't want to necessarily be. But yeah, run on my yeah. house when I'm watching the television. You know, be I think <laughs> it takes too much energy to propel it up. That's the thing. It's a lot of energy and a lot of money to propel yeah. things up. No, yeah, but something like that, if you genuinely thought you propel it up and then it'll end up going to the sun, say, and then it'll burn <laughs> out and it won't and it won't come back in home. Yes. But but then you would you would do it and say that that's a safe that's a safe way of producing it. Yeah, but it's just it, but it's just getting rid of it. Because I think I don't know, it's it might be thousands of years. So they, they put it in concrete uh -huh. a concrete mess and they put and it then somewhere. They it up. Yeah. But the thing, you know I don't know. But it is no, but it is it is the best way. If you if you can get rid of the nuclear waste safely, yeah, then it is the best way. But it's a big if, and, and if nobody mean, bombs you, yeah, yeah and nobody, nobody bombs, bombs you, you or, and there's yeah, no like yeah. earthquakes and whatever. Yeah, well, I you guess strategically put it off the coast of Russia, and then you know if you have a fight with the guy, you just go well, I'll I'll blow up my <laughs> nuclear waste underneath your. <laughs> I'm just you trying know, to get rid yeah, of it. Yeah. <laughs> so, do what? What are your thoughts on this whole Russian Ukraine thing, though? I feel like you're so close there, right? I don't know. I mean, coming from a Western country, uh -huh. they say that it's totally Putin's fault. And I, and I don't know any better than that, to be honest with you. I mean, but there is obviously like all these things, there's two sides to the story. I hear so much yeah. from the Western media, right? From my Because on yeah. Instagram, I still follow my friends from the right. US and in, yeah. in Europe. And they are all talking about that shit. And I feel like 
it's not to put down the fact that there is a war happening, but if you look at Iran as well, it's pretty, it's, what, what's happening there is pretty bad as well with the protests and everything, right? And if you look at, uh, what's that place called? Israel. It's, mm. it's pretty bad as well, you know, if you look at like those missiles that shoot in the sky every night mm. and you look at North Korea, it's still pretty bad. I don't know how, right, we are in 2022, but we're still doing this. It's the human condition, isn't it? We, we've, we've always been at war. Always. At some point in the world, Uh huh. There's always been a war. There all. I mean, I'm pretty sure if you went back in history and you said there's that ten year period there in I don't know 1926 between the wars. That was something. I bet, that was I bet yeah, there'll be someone going around killing someone. It's, it's just the way it is, sadly. But wow. we've got the we've got the, such a big ability now to finish the world off that it's more dangerous because it's not localized necessarily. That's I mean, right. especially from a nuclear perspective. Yeah, man. You yeah. know that goes off. The the wind blows. Anything you, could happen. You, you kill yourself, never mind your enemy, don't you? Yeah. It's, it's not a, it's I not was, a good thing. Uh, I was speaking to, uh, there's a guy that's come, there's a, there's a friend of ours who's mm. coming, his name is MJ. And uh, I was speaking to him about how America, the US has a base in every country, right? right? More or less, more or less. But if you were to strip them from that base in that specific country, I think it would, because he was saying, just imagine if, there were no bases, right? If right. America didn't have a base in, let's say, Japan. I think J- the Japanese would be like, oh my God, I think I better, you know, start putting some money into- Military. Yeah. Oh, I think yeah. that's instinctual, right? Yeah. No, I mean, that happened after the Second World War. They, they had it in Germany as well. When I first went to Germany, they had loads of American bases mm-hmm. and, and British bases, actually, because they were essentially <laughs> occupied, but they weren't allowed to have a full-blown military. It's only recently that Germany- has got itself a full-time military. They used to have people going doing national service for a year, uh-huh. but they didn't have a proper, proper military as such because it, it, was, it was all part of NATO and the Americans took a lot of the responsibility for that because they, they, they had, they're next to Russia and there was the, the, you know, the Iron Curtain, so you've got the Communist oh. bloc, the Western bloc, and that's and that's because when, at the end of the war, Russia and America and Britain were allies yeah, and then they split the continent up between them, if you will, at the end of the war. And wherever the dividing line was, Poland became communist, West Germany wasn't communist, mm-hmm. and East Germany was kind of somewhere yeah. in, between. in between. It's a funny situation. I, I went through Checkpoint Charlie to Eastern uh, Germany. Wait, when, you when said it was Eastern Germany. You said you were, you were, mm. well, you were part. Well, I, I don't. I don't know whether I caught that right. Like, right. were you? Did you say that you were in Germany at that time when post World War Two? No, not post World War Two. I was like, that, John, are no, you? No, bro, no, no, no right? No, no, that doesn't add up. <laughs> no, that when, doesn't really add up, you know. I, I was in Germany when it was still <laughs> when, check, when American check, bases and British bases were yeah, there. Is what you're check, saying? Yeah, and Checkpoint Charlie was still there before the wall came down, and I went through. Oh, East before Germany. the wall came down. Oh, yeah, and I, went okay. th- I went through Checkpoint Charlie, drove to East Germany through. Well, drove through East Germany to Western Berlin. Cause Western I see, Berlin, I see. It was, it was, geographically, it was weird. And Mom I, was there yeah, as well. She was there yeah. when the Berlin Wall and everything. Really? Yeah. yeah, yeah I wasn't yeah. there when it came down. Yeah. I went there after that. But yeah. Oh, shit. Mm. It's so strange, you know. I feel like in history, it moves and you don't know it's history until it's post-history. Yeah, I know. Yeah. But yeah. for Germans now, yeah. like young Germans, that Berlin Wall is a real, it's just like a... Myth. Uh, yeah, because it was in the nineties, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and like, so Didn't if you're exist. under thirty, you just kind of think, well, what's the big deal about a Berlin Wall? But, but it, was it was a huge thing at the time. Yeah, but I go to East Germany not all the time, but I got like Tilo, my friend, is from East Germany. He's oh, okay. in Leipzig, so I go there. But you'd never know the difference between Leipzig and the western part yeah, of Germany yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. But at that time, there, there was a big difference when I went through, and then you had all <sighs> bombed out buildings, and there was still bullet holes in the buildings. Yeah, the man. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and then when you went there, you had to when it was the east, the East Berlin part. Your official exchange rate for what was then Deutschmarks was one to one. What we used but to be called Deutschmark. Yeah, but if, if fucking you, hell, man, but if the you pre were, Euro. <laughs> if you could find a dealer on the street, which was a bit dodgy because you didn't know who you were dealing with, it was five to one. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Damn. And they were all a little, because they used to all get West German television over there. So they were all a bit pissed off with life, I think. They were kind of, they were kind of, but that's part of the thing that the, the, the problem is now. The West, when the East, Eastern states became part of the West, they really, really, really wanted to be part of the West. And they want to be part of Europe, you know, whether it's Lithuania or Ukraine yeah. or whatever. And I think Russia 
has never forgiven them for that to a certain extent. That's, that's, why, that's, that's a little bit of the putting mentality. I feel so too. Yeah, he's, I he, feel so too. He feels a bit insulted that they don't, you know. So he's forcing his hand a little bit. But they, they, the Ukrainians obviously don't want to become part of Russia. No, but I don't you know, think many people want to become part of Russia. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> especially now, right? No, not yeah, the which is a shame because I I feel that a lot of Russians now actually don't want to be. Well, I think you know? I think when it first started, associated with Putin, is yeah, what I'm they, to yeah, but they, because it's a bit. I'm assuming I'm I'm talking as a Westerner. Yeah, I'm assuming that their media is controlled very very tightly. They are. Yeah. They, you, yeah. you know, you can't use Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, and all that in in Russia. You have to yeah. use a VPN, which is insane. Yeah, well, it's basically North Korea. It is. Yeah. It is basically North. In yeah. Iran, it's the same thing right now. You can't use Facebook. You can't use Instagram. Right. You can't, yeah, it's insane. So that's why he was getting a lot of support. I think as as people come in and say, well, my son hasn't come back from Ukraine, he's dead. And then it's, it seeps in that way. Oh, then man. he's becoming less popular. But I think initially he was saying that Ukraine are essentially going to join NATO, so they're, they're encroaching on our country and they're a threat to us. Therefore, we're justified to go in there and take the country over, which, you know, that's that, that was his rationale. And I think, to be honest with you, he thought it would be, like a lot of these wars, Two weeks later, you come back in, you stick your flag down and go, that's it. Job yeah, done. yeah, but it's and not the case. No, no, it wasn't the case at all, especially when they get all of the Western arms thrown in and they don't want to, definitely don't, it would appear, or a large portion of them don't want to be part of Russia. I think yeah. there is a, a piece in the, on the border Mm-hmm. Whether it's Russian speaking, and I can't speak for them. Maybe some of them do actually want to be Russian. I don't know. I mean, I mean I'm, 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 I'm not become, an expert. I'm, yeah. I, don't want to, I, don't, I, might, I might be talking complete yeah. rubbish, but yeah. I, I I feel it's strange because when you when you I saw this YouTube video of this guy, yeah. and this was, I think maybe only a week after Russia shot at Ukraine and invaded, I saw a YouTube video of this guy going into a supermarket and looking at how empty it was and how prices of certain things just shot up. Yeah, well, it's gonna win. Yeah, gonna win. and it's quite. And he goes back like every week after that, and it gets more and more expensive. Oh shit! Yeah, and he's like, I can't even buy potatoes now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Isn't that well, wild? Well, it just. I mean, wars totally disrupt the country, don't they? The, the economy goes up the up the proper. <clears throat> yeah. Totally. And all your resources, your young men, they're not out planting they're potatoes. They're out learning fighting. how to shoot a gun. Yeah, or protecting the, you know, their village. It's no or fucking point. You just and you yeah. and they die. Yeah, and they die as well, yeah. Or so they, just, they kill or be killed to kind of yeah. right. It's not a nice thing. Yeah. No. Which I, I think if you if you go back to that comment on the Bumi Putra rights thing, right? Mm. I remember you you asking uh our opinion on the whole Bumi Putra rights thing. Yes, yes, right? yeah, because I find it interesting that you're talking to someone who formed the Bumi Putra yeah, 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 yeah. More or scenario or less. and put it in place. Actually, and, was it Razak, I think? And you're outside of that. Yeah, you're you're obviously not a boomy putra, so no. therefore you don't benefit from it. You won't, yeah, you won't get a government contract necessarily that someone who is a, who <laughs> yeah. is a boomy putra I might get subconned, get. you know, but or you know, yeah, yeah, you could subcontract <laughs> it. You could subcontract it, which is yeah. what a lot of people do. And actually, Matt himself said that he'd give someone a ten million pound sell contract. Him. Yeah, they'd go along to you and say, if you give me eight million, you can have my ten million pound. You know, contract yeah. and then. Yeah, and uh, that's an abuse of the system. It, but it, it's like all things, isn't it? Things can do. Get, I think systems get abused by everyone. So. Yeah. yeah, I think pre-podcast, I I don't think I'm the type to be uh, very politically uh, informed, mm. and I used to just discount the entire. You know what? It's just part of this country, right? It's not like it change anything. It's not like I can have a discussion. It's gonna make a change, right? But it's just mm. that I just knew that it wasn't fair. But when I really have more and more conversations, especially with people that are more inclined into politics, is when I realize actually, if we removed it immediately, right? Don't you think it would be chaotic and it would cause a civil war? Oh, I don't know. Oh, John, I don't know, man. I I, I, I really think I, think I think people are entrenched in their views, and some people more than others. Some people are there. They're a boomy putra, and all that that stands for. There's other people mm-hmm. who say oh, I'm an Indian, and all that that stands for, and I. As we said, maybe a little bit off camera before, it'd be nice if voluntarily people would come together a little bit more and have a mix, mixed economy. Yeah. But it's, it's, it, it, happens, it does happen. I was, as I was saying about my dentist in England, all the dentists in that <laughs> surgery are all Indians and the people doing the the, the, the front counter are, if you will, boomy putras like me. <laughs> but, uh, but all of the skill jobs have been done by, by Indians. And they I don't think that any of them are racist, but they... It's not a coincidence 
that if the six dentists that they're all Indians, and that happens here as well. Yeah, yeah. You know, if I, if I go to um, Tengat Tongshin where the hostel was, they've got TGs across the street, which is an Indian restaurant. All his staff are from, some of them from India, India, and then his any work is getting done on the on the place is all done by Indians, and the food's Indian, and yeah, but I wouldn't so call so him on. a racist. I would, t- and he'd be offended if you said he was. But that happens throughout the society, and it's not only in Malaysia; it's everywhere around it's the world. Every- actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, and yeah. and people just felt that one the Malays, generally speaking. Mm-hmm were falling behind and that was, that's why it was initially but do you feel um, like the sentiment has changed when you no, were back in Malaysia no, at the time no. it's the same mm. I think to I do to I do think it's a shame but I don't think it's changed I think it would be lovely if it did I think when Matt, when Dr. Matt here started his new party what Pejuang like the yeah, current no, one no, no, the GTA no, the, no, before when he was going into oh. Pesatu and all that stuff like t- mm-hmm. five years ago when I seen him at the Commonwealth thing if he'd stood up on that platform and said, I'm not going to start a Malay party, I'm going to start a multiracial party, I think his legacy would have gone through the roof. And he could have, at that time, I think he would have had the pull to maybe make it happen. But he didn't. He went, he went through a, a sort of, it was like a, he wanted to, essentially a umno without Najib. Yeah, yeah. You know, so it did nothing changed really, and then it ended badly, and it was a shame. Really. But he was, I think, trying to be. Shame. He's a very consistent person when yeah. it comes to defending like Malay rights. Though he's a very proud Malay. That's no, the thing. No, no, and to right. be honest with you, it's it's it, it is wrong that Malays, if you if you will, aren't participating in certain industries because it's all Chinese owned mm-hmm. or it's all Indian owned. But they probably do the same thing as well. And yeah. fact, Bumiputra does do the same thing to an extent. When I was at Proton. Like I said, you can. You could get a job at Proton, even that's a boom we put to country company. Mm. It's just if you've got Andrew and then your first cousin and then your mum and dad a job there, then someone in HR would go, hello. <laughs> There's something um, fishy going on. What, you what, guys yeah, are what, yeah, what are you doing here? So and so it's control, but you can get a job in a booming putter, or you can at least in Proton, or you could do you can, 20, 20 years ago. But is the sentiment the same though? Do you feel as if like there's a sensitivity no, with no, the discussion? I, on- I, no, I, I think when you're working in Proton, for example, and, and you were, I wasn't a booming putter. If you were working there, you weren't a booming putter. On a day-to-day basis- It's the same. It was, yeah, you, everyone was treated decently. They, I, I don't think that- uh, you, you, there you was would any go, biasness yeah, you would, yeah, you would leave and go, God, those guys hate me. They want to, <laughs> you know, I'm surprised my tyres of my car are still there, you know, and <laughs> it, it wasn't like that at all. They were, they were pretty good that way. But obviously the policy was different than, if you, from the UK, I, I'm not even sure if it would be legal for me to go to HR and go, hey, this guy's like, you know, he's obviously of Indian heritage, what do I do? <laughs> I'm not sure that would be allowed. But I'm sure in, in England... That there is racial bias. There is. I think Definitely. there's racial bias everywhere. everywhere. Yeah, there is. There right. is. But, but do you think there is racial bias set in stone, though? That's the thing. No, no, it's not in the constitution. Right? It's yeah, not in see, the constitution. For yeah. us, it's a policy. Mm. Yeah, that's the biggest. No, I do understand that. I do understand that. Right? Yeah, I do. I do. So I just feel as if like I'm so conflicted because you know we were talking about war, right? Yeah. And war is something that we all try to avoid. And if you look at Tun M's life, he's basically been through like the whole World War Two. Which is bonkers, but yeah. Yeah. Right? And you, I don't think once well, you've seen war, you yeah. want to see it happen again. Yeah, but I don't think Malay- Malaysia, well, it was affected by World War Two because the Japanese obviously came in and took over from the British. But I mean, they didn't really yet fight anyone. I mean, the British fought the Japanese and didn't do yeah, very yeah, yeah. well. <laughs> and uh, Well, they came in bicycles. What are you going to do? Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, but the Malays just kind of, or Malaysians, if you will, weren't affected so much by it, even though Chinese Malays probably were. Yeah, Chinese Malaysians Because got the, the Japanese were fighting China at yeah. the time and probably looked on you as the enemy. It was quite bad. Specifically. Yeah. yeah, it was quite bad. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I've said this before on the podcast, but uh, Jen, she was saying how I told you, you know, my grandfather actually went through that. I'm like, huh? Are you serious? And it's uh, her grandfather. You know what they used to do? They used to pump water into your stomach. They just force feed you water. They throw you in the ground. They start stomping on your stomach until you vomit water out again. Like, my God. That is total savagery, man. Yeah, I know. <sighs> but wars don't bring out the best in people. They don't. I mean, if you go to Japan, you would probably think it's the most civilised country in the whole world. But what they've gone through is pretty... Yeah, but... but what they, they've done. But yeah, Jesus. what they've done in the last... In that war sometimes was unforgivable. Yeah, it was. Yeah, in China, here, wherever. They weren't very kind to their uh, adversaries. 
But if you go to, I'm sure I haven't been to Japan, but any time I've seen them, they all look like very classy kind of people. They're very, very, you <laughs> yeah, know, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. gentle and nice. And you know, yeah. I think after the war, when you had the Russians in what was it now East Germany? <coughs> was East Germany? Isn't now? It's part, it's all one country. But there was a lot of kerfuffle about the. There was a lot of raping going on with the soldiers, mm -hmm. and Stalin apparently said it's been a long war. And left it at that. There was no attempt to say, "Look, guys, it was a long the war. War's, the war's <laughs> over. Go back to your families." It was. It was, it was a long war. So he was uh, condoning it essentially. And if you don't, it's like anything in society. If you don't uh, officially not condone it, if you will, yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't it, set a firm it, rule. Yeah, then. yeah, yeah. It, it happens. Yeah. And I'm, you know, so I'm in. Some, I'm sure there's some people oh. in mainland China who are old who remember the Japanese and probably hate their guts to this day. Yeah, you know. Man. But if you go to Japan, you say, well, that's just not the case. Did They're you, nice people. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. But we're all capable. That's why sometimes when people get very judgmental about it all, you don't know until you're in that situation yourself that's what right. you're going to do. That's right. That's you right. know? And hopefully not. Go hopefully around, not the worst. Yeah, 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 yeah. Torturing and raping people. But you hope. But you don't know. You really don't. Yeah, you don't know until you're in that position. Right? Of course you don't, no. But it is a strange time. Yeah. Did you hear that story of that Japanese uh, man who was stuck at an island and he thought it was still World War Two? Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's, a few, there's a few stories. Well, because the Japanese wouldn't give up. They wouldn't believe that the emperor would, would, would yeah. ever surrender. And so right. when they were in the jungle and stuff and they heard that they'd surrendered, they thought it was the, you know, the Americans lying to them. To keep, so they stayed oh, there. And then right. 20 years later, they'd been living in the jungle Thinking the war was still going on. Thinking the yeah. war was still going on. Yeah. Not that many of them, but there was, yeah, there was people. There was one there was one guy who was really old. And he started firing at tourists with his gun. <laughs> his gun is still working? Yeah, like in uh I think like early two thousands, he just he, they forgot to inform him. Yeah. And he was on an island for so long. <laughs> oh, yeah, that no. guy's got some serious formal man. He, yeah. Like, yeah. Right. Yeah. Like and then he started shooting at tourists and then they didn't believe him when the police came to like tell him, look, the war has been over for a long time. He he's didn't want to believe them. He's like, no, you're just spies. Start shooting at them again. And then they had to bring his commander there to tell him that, hey. <laughs> it's over, yeah. Yeah. The commander was like, it's been a while, yeah. Pseudo time travel. Man. Yeah, yeah, they forgot to inform him. I don't know how to feel if I was that guy though. Yeah. <laughs> it's like he got well, left yeah, out. I'd be a bit upset, not gonna lie. Well, yeah. <laughs> Well, I suppose he was upset, to be honest with you. He pretty thought the emperor was still, you know, yeah. doing his thing. <laughs> and obviously, he wasn't. Yeah, I, I don't think Japan has an emperor now, does it? Is it Sorry? Is, it. Does, does they have royalty still in Japan? Yeah, they do. They do? Okay. They do. Really? I think recently, like, one of the princesses, the princess, she married out of the royal family or something like that. Oh, and okay. then they, she, she basically left the, the royal family. Which is so strange. I feel like I don't even know why royal families still exist. I don't actually, to be honest with you. But I think we cannot touch that on the Malaysian aspect of it. Well, uh, um, I believe the Agong is the best. Yes. He is number, number one. one. <laughs> well, no. But in, in, no, in England, I mean, they just had a huge funeral. Yeah. And it went on queen. for two weeks with the Queen. I mean, it was over. I mean, my dad died. We had 45 minutes and said goodbye, Dad. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And the same with my mum. And that went on for so long, it was untrue. And I. I'm not anti-royalty, but I don't think that it it has really got a place. But people, there are still a lot of people who love them, so and that's fine. I don't just, and I don't hate them. Don't get me wrong at all. <laughs> you love them, don't but, you? But, the but, Queen and the King are number one. No, no, but they. As if you're if if you've got a democracy. I don't see where the royalty really comes It's quite into it. like uh, oxymoron, right? Don't you think having royalty and being in a democracy? Yeah, it's yeah. a little bit of a. It is, and the thing is, it's not good for the, for them either. I mean, they're they're just told to, you know, cut a ribbon here, go yeah, here, go to the horse races, and wave, wave. And, and and you sort of think, well, I actually do they don't really enjoy that, and yeah. they you know, and it costs a fortune. I actually don't know why, right? My mom is so obsessed with the royal family in the UK. Well, a lot of people are. Americans are. A lot of Americans are. Yeah, you know, yeah. They the don't. They family. don't want their own royal family, but they're kind of happy that you know that the to, UK has yeah, yeah it has, that they can you know read about occasionally I don't get it you know yeah. I don't get it I don't, I don't understand, understand the hype of it I really don't know why because my mom was like oh my god the queen she passed away I'm like I didn't know you knew her personally 
Yeah, I know. <laughs> but buddies, when, like we are with Hanayu. Yeah, but, <laughs> but if you join the army or the, any, you know, the police force or whatever, you swear mm-hmm. royal, you swear your loyalty to the crown. And a lot of people take that seriously. And that's, you know, what I mean, and, and not that they shouldn't, you know, if, if, you, if yeah. that's your job, but they take it on board, and that's what they believe. And they and they would be highly insulted if they was listening to this conversation. And they would that, really? you, that, that you don't like, not don't like, but you don't see the point of royalty. But it's not a personal thing. I'm sure you don't hate mm. the queen per se. No more. I wouldn't. Than I, I don't say I hate yeah. them. I just yeah. feel like I don't understand the hype about them. You know. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm not gonna lie, right? Like I think if uh, the royal family in the UK gave me Sir Jonathan Ng, right. I would be pretty like. I'd be you'd go for it, would you? You'd accept it. I would accept it, hell yeah, but I don't know hell how. Yeah. yeah, but I wouldn't accept it if like I was called Tan Sri. I'm like, oh. Oh, I take it. <laughs> yeah, you take a tan tree. I would. You Why take not? a tan tree. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude, I can flex. Yeah. I don't know. I just no. feel it's so weird to have a tan tree. No, to have I, a- I, I, well, I just think titles are a little bit unusual. When I was doing the ASEAN thing, they mm-hmm. put me on stage and they let me introduce people. And of course, like I keep saying, I'm, I forget people's names the whole nine yards. <laughs> I'm not the best. And they've got these long titles, and the girl said, so "Do long. not get it wrong, because they actually get really insulted if you yeah. say Tan Shri Yang, yeah, Yang, long, Yang Bahomat, long, whatever. whatever. Yeah, you don't get it right. They, God, I, I did it because I thought, well, you know, it gives me a little bit of publicity. I'm trying to get this programming. But I, was, I was thinking, I, I don't really know. I mean, I'm quite happy being an, an insect, you know, or a <laughs> Mister, you know. I, I don't get the whole." Yeah, I don't get the it whole either. thing, you know, and I'm not sure why a lot of people will even get them. To be honest with you, it's only because they're connected to someone. Maybe. It's connected yeah. to someone. I heard some people pay so for it too. You can you can buy them. Uh, funny, uh, Lily, Lily, who uh, I went to the your political rally that you went on right. to last night. She when she came over to England to visit her son. Her son works in England. Who's Lily? Lily, sorry. Lily is a girl who does a silver mind course. And when I was over here, uh-huh. I did the silver mind course with her, and I've become friends with her since. And she took me to the political rally yesterday. Okay, in TTDI. In TTDI, yeah. yeah. So when she came to England to visit her son, who's in, he buys and still shares and stuff like that. He's in the financial side mm-hmm. of stuff. I was, I've now lost track of what I was going to say. No, she totally was, lost you were saying how uh, Lee was bringing you to the, uh, the, 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 ra- rally. the, the Charama, the rally in yeah. TTDI. No, that wasn't, for what, a reason. that wasn't what I was going to talk about. I was going to talk about, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought it would be fun when she was in England to get to get her a title. So I went online and you can buy in England, you can buy titles. They give you a piece of land smaller than that. That you're, you you you, you own actually like own yeah a, and then, a ruler yeah yeah a ruler's worth of land and then they <laughs> get, and, it, and it comes with a title so you can say John John of Pembrokeshire or something and you get oh shit. a thousand quid yeah or if you go up to like three or four thousand quid you can actually get you know a, a more kosher a table you get a yeah, table worth of land that, yeah and then you uh but you can actually put it down on you know if you travel when they say what's what your the title fuck? Yeah, you, you can put like, Jonathan Ung of Cambridge or whatever yeah yeah yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Apparently, and it's legal. Yeah, so they, I didn't know that. I was only doing it for a joke. I just, I thought, yeah, I think you can. You can in England. You can buy it. And apparently, they've got lawyers and it's a proper wow. thing. Wow. You can, yeah. So I guess it's the same. You know, a lot of times, right, yeah. Malaysians are very critical of their government. And they used to right. say, you know, parliament is a joke. People are sleeping. That's People basically are- what was happening last night. At the, at the are DIA. you fucking what, serious? There people were people like, sleeping. No, as in like the whoever was speaking was saying, "Oh, you know, parliaments or whatever, right?" Oh, <laughs> talking shit about the current government, right? And, you see, you see, yeah, it's everyone's like a, very critical about the government. Yeah, yeah. well, no, well, yeah, that's because they're the opposition, isn't they? Well, yeah, you know, yeah. But that, then again, uh, yeah. I think I saw this YouTube video of the UK Parliament, and it's actually quite similar. People are yelling at each other. Oh, yeah, yeah they do. They do. Well, I don't. They can John, be. They were yelling, John. They can occasionally, but normally they don't yell. They, they don't yell. at one point I saw a minister yeah. sit to another minister. What you do is very dodgy. I said, I don't like that word dodgy. Oh, I want no. you to take that back. Oh no! All right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, what is no. happening? I mean, it's televised. I don't watch it very often. It's okay. but they show it on the news. So you do get to see it, but I wouldn't sit all day long watching Parliament. On I was just skimming through, and I got to that part. Yeah, so yeah, I thought yeah. it was hilarious. Yeah, yeah. So it's the same everywhere. I feel right. It feels oh, very no. barbaric, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And yeah. the house is quite narrow, you know? Like the UK Parliament, I feel like that 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 uh space, they sit like right next to each other. Right. 
Yeah, yeah, they do. I yeah. mean, we adopted the whole thing from mm. the British. No, English. but the um, the Malaysian one is like you have your own like sure, space. sure, but principally it's, uh, principally it's, it's, it's adopted from yeah, the British, right? So, yeah, so they maybe just that's give why them more space they don't sit so close together. <laughs> yeah. Maybe that's why they yell at each yeah, other in Parliament. Yeah, they'll, yeah, be, right. they'll be doing the old salat or the whatever to each other. Otherwise, <laughs> John, when did you leave Malaysia to go back to the UK? Oh, what you mean from Lotus? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was around nine eleven time. It was twenty years ago. Whoa, twenty years ago. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. So you left in year 2000 as well? 2000, wait, what, what year was 9-11? 2000, right? 2001. 2001? Mm, yeah, Mahathir re- just retired about that time and we had the 9 11 thing. So it was like early 2000s. Wow. That's when I left. I, I kept coming back to annoy people about the C-Bang <laughs> thing. And then, I, and, then it's, and then I kind of made friends with the people who have Red Palm. And then I kind of used to come What back. is Red Palm? Red Palm was a hostel. The one that I used to sleep oh, in the baggage room. Oh, okay, 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 okay. And that's how I know like t Low is in Leipzig. And I see, I see. Huh. But, so you've yeah. been retired for uh, ever since? Ever Pretty since much. Since? Yeah? I mean, I used to volunteer at the Citizens Advice Bureau, which is like a, you give people free legal. Oh, that's advice. nice. Yeah, but, okay. I'm not, but I'm not a lawyer, but I, you know. Well, like, you could be. Well, <laughs> I don't really want to be, but I used to work. Got hell, but yeah. I did that for five years, and then I did a bit with my brother, and I did odds and sods. But Got really it. and truly, the only thing I'd really want to come back to work for would be to get that project off the ground for a couple of years, and gotcha. then I'd walk away and I'd be happy. It's right. like a little itch, but yeah. anything else is just I'm just sort of. So, so what's it like passing being, time? What's it like being retired for twenty years? It's nice. Yeah, I don't miss it. When I was talking to a, one of your politicians who's now in trouble for taking bribes. I don't know if he's going to Which one? There's so many. Uh, well, it was, it, was a, it was a civil servant. He's, he was in charge of the... Are you allowed to say his name? I suppose so. He's uh, um, Madani. How do you spell that? M-A-D-N... M-A-D-A-N-I. Madani. But, yeah, but, but now where was Maksud? No, no, no. That Maksud means meaning of what I'm a fucking no, he, he, no, he was... It doesn't really matter. I mean, he's not been convicted yet. It's a little bit unful. I mean, you can say his name. I mean, it'd be the same as if I was being on right. trial for something. It's not illegal to it's say an John's on trial. Yeah. Yeah. No Madani, uh, man. But I was talking to him and we were, uh, look, I've now lost my track of the conversation. We were actually talking about Brian the whole time I spoke to him. You're talking about retirement? Ooh. Well, I was talking, yeah, no good. I was talking to, because uh, I go along to these these conferences and he used to speak at the conference because he was the head of the, C- he was the CEO of the Malaysian Automotive uh, robotic um, mm. internet of things sure. thing. So he'd natter chatter away. I'd ask a few questions and he very kindly invited me for coffee with him and his, his first helper. Oh, wow. So I had a coffee and a chat with him, but a lot of it was about taking bribes because I was, because at the time, obviously you've got Najib going with his yep. 8 billion worth of yep. one MBD money and whoever else is involved in that. God knows what who <laughs> else is involved. But anyway, so we, we were talking about bribes the whole time. The next thing, I said goodbye to him. We, I went off and I just put him into Google. Up comes a little video. He's got a little orange suit on him. You know? An orange it, suit? And, yeah, yeah. And policemen around him and he's going off to... Under allegations under, of bribery? Under allegations. Him and nine other people. It's 15 million or something. It wasn't wow. jump change. Yeah. Yeah, bless him. I mean, I don't know. Bless okay. him. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, if he's innocent, if he's innocent, it's the most UK thing ever. Yeah, no. But if he's innocent, I mean, then he's he's it's it's going to stay with him, even if he's innocent. It, people will be tarnished yeah. with it, you know. That's right. But uh, and if he's guilty, then he deserves whatever he gets because it was a lot of money that he's getting. Yeah, money. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, but I've got nothing personal against him at all. I mean, at the time, I was quite happy that someone that he was prepared to listen to what I had to say. But I, th- I always get I got the impression he was trying to pick my brains because that government body also does training so he wanted to know what I was thinking so he could probably if he if that makes he sense. come up with something useful he would use it and he'd get it for free as possibly you know right, right, right. I mean that's fair enough I'm not yeah, stupid yeah. I'm not you know I know that the, <laughs> the way the world you know the world yeah. turns so wow yeah, yeah. so it's they've got they've got an acting CEO at the present moment so I went I went on Saturday Friday Friday I went to the automotive show in the convention centre at KLCC and girls who work for him were there because they were they were co-sponsoring it with a the newspaper person mm-hmm. the, the guy you know Yong Vong Yong 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 my the, the, the journalist oh Yamin, 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 Yamin Yong yeah Yamin Vong Vong or Yong yeah. but you said you you know him very well right no no I know him from going to conferences and he used to always say to me if you've got anything that's uh, of interest to all Malaysians let me know. 
And it was that that's that I'm assuming was 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 code for something that's not purely non Bumi Putra. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm guessing, I'm guessing, and that's that's why I put him on when I when you I see see uh, him in the email. Yeah, that's that really. How do you know? How do you know him? How did you meet him? Well, I met him at these conferences. When you go to ASEAN automotive conferences, there's lo- loads of different people. I shared the stage with Mahathir's son. We didn't get on at all. He, he left right. I, I went left. I wasn't going to crawl around him. Um, Tenku Marlil. Then there was the, the CEO of um, Proton, the, the one that went off yeah. and became a, a, a big noise in Petronas. I forget his name. Zion or his name was. Then I was on stage with the CEO of Peridua. The whole huh. lot of them. Yeah, yeah. Ones, and I was introducing them and then I sat there and they had discussions and I had to kind of like, oh, excuse me, John, uh, could you clarify that so that the audience can... Un- that kind of a role. Got it. Got but it. someone there liked me. I was very fortunate. Not that I capitalised on it very well, but... <laughs> you don't need to capitalise on that's, everything. That's how I... Well, that... Yeah, but that's what you would do normally, wouldn't it? You'd, uh, that's because of the, all the connections. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I never, I don't, if I met him in the street, I probably wouldn't recognise him and they wouldn't recognise me. You know? I think maybe yeah. if you're back in Malaysia, they might recognise you, John. They might or might <laughs> They might or might not. But it was an interesting thing and it was nice of the, the girl who was doing the ASEAN thing to let me have that position because I had no, you know, it's not like I was coming in as an individual, retired, as you say, mm. and it wasn't like I was sitting there as a, as a CEO of a multinational company where she's, where right. it would, you know. So it was nice of her, yeah. I find it so mm. so intense how you have this itch and it's lasted so long. No, it's because some people would say that it's a, a mental illness, but I consider it to be an itch. <laughs> you know? It's a very fine line, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. I don't but know. It's, but it's not a, an obsession. If it never happens, so I be, won't care. Right. And that's partly why, like when I said I didn't get on particularly well with Moxani, you know, the son of Matt, I didn't go chasing after him because I just thought, well, it's not worth it. Mm. And it wasn't. And I would have just made a fool of myself if I'd done that. But <laughs> the if, if it happens and it happens naturally, then I'm happy. And if it doesn't sure. happen, yeah, that's fine. I'm not going to yeah go crawling around. Do you think if it were to happen, yeah. you would come back to Malaysia to see the the yeah. reveal and everything? I'd like, I'd like to. Yeah, I'd like. I mean, even it had nothing to do with me because I'm not obviously not the man who can write checks for billions. Yeah. Neither so, can any of us. But no. I feel like that conversation is now recorded, well, yeah, so I think yeah. it's quite nice. Yeah, I mean, it would be nice that the, the potential to make that into something viable is better than that shopping mall that we were talking about. <laughs> and it, so a lot of things are more viable than the empty shopping malls yeah, yeah, yeah. throughout KL now. Yeah. Man. And that would be more of a a legacy for Malaysia than, you know, uh, five shop, shopping malls in a, a kilometre square piece of space, you know. That's something that, that I think has some worth. I feel I still, so too. I still do, I still do. But it would have to be done properly. I mean, any, anything can fail if you don't do it properly, but the potential right. there is there from a commercial point of view, from from car companies who would be interested in mm-hmm. working with it, and from an academic, you know, perspective, perspective as well. Yeah. A lot of I actually know a couple of people mm. in the academic line, yeah, and they are actually speaking of uh, new courses and new lines of work in terms of teaching uh, grads. I mean, sorry, not grads, like uh, students who want to pursue specific. Uh, Career trajectories. Yeah, 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 yeah. And apparently the newest one is actually in death. death. What? Yeah. Like that's, that's the big. new thing. The new thing in 2022. I, I I, mean, I just overheard this conversation between both it, of them. It, 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 what, not, not as in like become a hitman or something. No, 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 no. no. It's about the process of uh, death. death. It's like, how do you service clients? Oh, Okay. You know, yeah, 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 after their loved ones have yeah, passed, yeah. how do you, yeah. you that's graduate hospice, yeah, and that's you apply for Nirvana? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, no, that's what hospices do. Hospices do that. They, they, they take mm. care of the person dying, but they also how take to. care of their loved ones because they, they interact between the two. Yeah. When my dad died, the hospice, he, would, he died at home, but the hospice, my sister phoned him up, the hospice came around because they were kind of overseeing the process and they told her how to fill the form in, what to do, how the grieving process, the process is going to go. Yeah. yeah. That is a, and you've got to have a certain personality to be able to carry that off because you're going to be dealing with clients who half an hour previously have lost their loved, loved one, one in a very short period of time. And it's, it's a very delicate situation. And it is a delicate situation, yeah. If you, it's, it's more than an academic thing. That's a very much a... A feel. A, a, yeah, feel and personality a kind hum, of a... A humanity thing. It is, yeah, yeah. Some people couldn't do that and some people could. It's, yeah. 
Yeah. Well, I suppose it's like all jobs, isn't it? So when I when I got that email from you and you were mm. discussing about how like Sepang should be or could be a new education tool, yeah. if you will, to a lot of these uh, education establishments, I th- I thought mm, it's interesting. But then when I had overheard that conversation with my my two friends over a beer and some cigarettes, and they were like, you know, uh, we should, you know, and then they were like, the newest thing is death, and then I was like, wait, wait, what? And if you think about it, if a lot of experimentations yeah. with new courses come out. It's it's definitely a viable thing. Well, it's an over it's a, it's an old thing, isn't it? Death. We're all. I mean, that's partly why religions are around and spirituality. <laughs> yeah, it's people the old know school what, course. What what happens after death? Yeah. You know, do you yeah. go to heaven, hell, nirvana? Yeah. Does it? Do you just go in the ground and you're finished and so, you know the worms eat you and then yeah and then that's you it. know you become a turn into a vegetable. Beans. Maybe that's what they should use the empty buildings for. You know, just. Just slot, stack yeah, they, the yeah, you stack the people in there. <laughs> like catacombs in, the, yeah. in Rome. They just do it underground, didn't they? Yeah. Now they do it upwards. Do it upwards, it's yeah. Nearer to, it's nearer to yeah. God. No, it is an interesting thing. I mean, for me, when I was leaving school, I was kind of pushed into a work, working class environment. I was yeah. pushed into engineering because there was factories around then. But factories now, when I started designing, we did it manually. Mm-hmm. And we had rooms <laughs> full of draftsmen, rooms full of hundreds then the computers start doing it. Then it went down to like double figures. And now you can put the criteria in and, and it's it does just it for so, you. It's much, yeah, not doesn't for you, but a lot of it can be done for you because you, you just say it's got to have four wheels, this, that, the other. Radiuses have to be a certain size to meet legal requirements. You feed all of that in and it does, and it stops you repeating the process again and again, reinventing the wheel. So a, a, a portion of it does. So there's less designers because you don't need wow. you don't need a thousand designers and five years to do a car. Now you can do it in one hundred designers in two years. And this happened over the course of how many years? It, when I started doing drafting, it was I was in my early twenties. When I was thirty, I was talking to I, I was working in America. There was a young lad come over. He was a bit of a spoiled brat, actually, but he he was he was like four or five years younger than me, and he said they they were shown how to do manual drawing because they wanted to show them how it was done in the olden days. So at thirty, the skills that I had learned were defunct. That I'd learned at twenty five. Five years later, you couldn't get a job as a draftsman Holy manually. Holy shit! It went. It was very quick, and it gets better and better and better as a, as the software improves. But yeah, from you couldn't in nineteen ninety, everything you couldn't get a job as a unless you a very very small niche, you a, yeah niche kind of a designer. Then you wouldn't get a job unless you could do the software. So this was over a span of like five years. Five years. Five years. It went from coming in to being in, and there was no no manual option. It's it was fast. quick. It was quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, and now obviously that's it, it could be a software. year or two. Yeah, you, people wouldn't know how to do manual drawing. Now you'd have to, you'd, they, and they wouldn't really want to know because why would you? It's it's a defunct skill. Damn. You know what I mean? You do. You, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, you, yeah. You spend totally a month understand. doing something. I can do ten minutes on the computer. I was just having this. Co- uh, and we it's were, better as well. You can, it is, it, and it's foolproof. Yeah, because when it was two D, I as a draftsman struggled to understand what I was looking at, and you have to put, you have to cut sections through it, and then you have to imagine what it yeah. looks like. Whereas now, I was going to show you that, but if you pick this up on a computer screen, you're designing it, you can go like that. Anyone you can rotate and his, it. Yeah, anyone and his dog can see that that's a glass. <laughs> Whereas if I show you the side of a car done in 2D... It's flat. Can do 2D, yeah, you, you wonder what you're looking at. You look like a silhouette. It yeah. looks like a silhouette. That's yeah. what you're going to get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Nothing difficult. more. It's difficult. Yeah. So, so, and some people, because they, they like the individuality of it, because you could tell who drew what, because we're all humans, like we have our own handwriting. Yeah. But that's a romantic thing. I mean, really, you want to design a yeah. car, don't you? Doesn't that's right. And you want yeah. something to not crash. Yeah. You want it to be yeah. efficient. You yeah, want it to look exactly. good. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Meet all the legal requirements to sell it in all the different markets. And all and that you don't want to make mistakes anyway, right? No, you end up going to court. It's so weird. In jail you know? sometimes, yeah. We were having this conversation yesterday yeah. with a... Uh, Maping. Is it Maping or Maping? Maping. 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 And she's a, she's a career coach. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I was, I, I brought up the whole point of, when I was younger, I used to love to draw. Right. And I wanted to be a designer. So mm. I used to, because I liked animation, like, you yeah, know, Toy yeah. Story. Right. So you like graphic design. Yeah. As and to, yeah when I grew older, oh, I- Excuse me, guys. Yeah. No worries. Yes, so 
when I grew older, I realized that, oh, you, you don't really need to learn how to draw anymore. You just need to know how to use a computer to use Photoshop and Illustrator to design something, right? To an extent, to an extent. The, the, the software now, yeah. if you're going to do the creative side, which is what you would like to do, say you're going to become a stylist in a car, mm. so you're going you're to style a Ferrari, you still initially start off hand. But that's the only time you really do do hand. But then you do that onto into the software, and the software will then turn that into 3D, I see. blah, 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 and then it goes on from there. But they do actually start off quite often with hand. If you're doing engineering stuff, it's 100% computer. For, 100%, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah and it's much. weird because that transition happens so fast. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I, Because when I was younger and I wanted to do that, and by the time I hit I, like 18 years old, nobody was drawing anymore. No. Nobody. I, I tell you, even as a designer today, if you can sketch, so you can sketch that by hand and it looks like a glass, and then you can sketch your idea, idea out on a piece of paper, that is still a useful skill. It is, but it's just... It's still a useful skill. Then you do it on the computer, but you've got it... So that you, can, you understand the yeah, perspectives of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, you, you know? can see it, yeah. I, if I, I was always crappy at, at doing sketches, and it used to annoy the living crap out, you know, <laughs> living daylight. Because if you can do a, a nice sketch then it's easy to put it on the computer. When you're just doing it straight on the computer, it's a bit more difficult. I fear for that, you know. Yeah. I fear that one day we will all be obsolete. Mm. And our generation is that bridge to that that point. No, you are. And, and jobs are different as well. My nephew is 28 now. When I was asking him what he wanted to do when he left school, he uh, he wanted to be a gamer. And I'm looking at him, gamer? He's bloody hell. To me, like <laughs> 10 years ago, that was like, you know, what you've been smoking, Liam, you know. And... Uh, <laughs> I then last week or a few weeks ago on television they said in London there's a huge gaming industry and they earn a fortune. Yeah, they do. Absolute fortune. But they don't tell you a lot of what you have yeah. to do to get to that point though. Yeah. Like you know, if your nephew is going to say I want to be a gamer, yeah, I don't think Ehung is going to be like, oh, you want to be a gamer? Yeah. No, you want to be a gamer? How many hours do you play? Yeah. What's your ratio? Oh no, no, no. He wanted to design games. I think. Oh, okay, okay, design. okay. He's he's now a coder. He left school at fifteen. He refused to go, and he was an absolute little. <laughs> and uh, he, he very he started off ending up pretty much ended up in doing retail job. But he had a friend who knew that he was good at coding, and he recommended him, and he got him into the company. And now he's sort of management. He has people working for him. He went to New York. To wow. Give. Yeah, yeah. He's only twenty eight. He's done well, but he's got qualification wise, he's he's not. Very uh, well qualified, <laughs> but he's a nice guy. But he obviously didn't like school, and him didn't get on. You know, didn't didn't marry very well. I think not a lot of people. Yeah. Not I mean, not not everyone is fit for that whole journey. You know, the, yeah, the stereotypical yeah. journey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, Liam wasn't. His sister was, and then Liam wasn't. But Liam is is doing very well, and his sister is doing well, which is good from from That's my good. perspective because they're my family. But yeah. yeah, so he's in New York right now, and he's doing. No, no, no. He told me he was. He was over there. He had to give some talk, and then he's but he's, he's he, 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 uh, fucking no, hell, no, for the company that he works for. It wasn't like a talk to the general oh, okay, public. Okay. <laughs> then, like, Whoa, uh, bro. No, he works from home. He works from home, oh, and he's so in nice. Scotland. He's in Scotland. But that's the whole thing about coding, and that's why the world's changing. It if you get yeah. to go the computer, it does everything. Yeah, you don't have to be in. You a, don't an need office. to. Yeah, and COVID has, has accentuated that again. Unfortunately, not for my industry, but for many others. No, for event management. <laughs> no, event management is nice, though. I mean, if you like people, event management is good. I think it's nice to a certain extent, but a lot of people don't see the back end stuff where it's quite, it's the not so nice stuff you see behind the scenes. Like the carrying, you have to be there at odd hours. Like, oh, you have to be there at 3 a.m. because the thing starts at 7 a.m. and you have to sound test at 5 a.m. or whatever, right? So it takes a lot of out right. of people. Oh, so what you do, what sort of event management are you doing then? You're doing like bands and stuff. No, I do uh, a mixture of exhibitions. I do media events. I do all sorts. It depends okay. on what the client wants. But it's a it's a it's a family business, right? So you take what you can get, but you do the odd things. Like for example, I think yesterday, right? I was uh, at Shah Alam and I was doing you know food sampling. Well, yeah. at the supermarket, right? right. And uh. My role is to speak to the supervisor of that supermarket to tell them that this location is where we do the sampling. And as usual, if you, sp if you speak to a supervisor of a supermarket, the guy is never going to respond to his phone until you're there. And then you speak to someone at the counter and says, can I speak to your manager? And then when he comes and you say like, oh, uh, I'm going to be doing a food sampling here. 
And he says, no one told me. I'm like, I mean, I tried to reach you, but you didn't pick up the phone. So my task is to to organize all this so that the food sampling can occur because my client wants to do a food sampling there. Right, so you're a facilitator. A kind of, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's from that to even organizing like, I don't know, a run, a 5K, a 10K, right. a charity event. Like I think my mom has worked a couple of times with Tunem and I don't know, a few big names. How did you get into Tunem then? How did how did you connect with him? Oh man. Through Saifel? Saifel is, is PA? I don't remember. I, I oh. don't remember the PA's name. Yeah, his name's Saifel. It was Saifel. It was, I think, maybe. Yeah. But it's still same PA, I think. Yeah. I think it's still Saifel. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Oh. It's been with him a long time. <laughs> But, but, but um, I'm big mates with him, but I do know he is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think for us, what happened in end of 2021 is what we did was we did a list on a Word document and we listed down every single like guest we would want on a podcast. And I think four of us have different personalities. I'm the very like, I would say I'm pessimistic or I'm a realist when it comes to these type of names. So every time I look at names like Said Sadiq and all that, I'm like, guys, this is not going to happen, man. And Andrew is the, no, we should just list it all out and then we can statistically see what we can get it. He's the analytics guy, right? And then Saravanan is the guy that's ambitious. He's like, no, we aim for the top. We aim for the best of the best. And if we get second, at least we're there. Oh, yeah. Right? So it's a mixture of personalities. Well, you did well, though. You did well. The people, you, I mean, getting doctor, I mean, I'm sure a lot, of, a million and one people want to talk to him. Yeah, probably. So, and you got him on there and you got, so you got a uh, young yo, uh, Hannah, Hannah, your Hannah our, our little mate we seen oh. last night. <laughs> <laughs> and then Said Sadiq. Said Sadiq's a very good speaker. And Fami Fadil, was Fami yeah. there last night as well? Uh, Fami was there as well, yeah. Did Fami you say Fami. hi? Or it was too crowded? Oh, there were 4,000 people, I was at the back. I was about a third up. We got there early, but someone in front of me had a big banner, you know, like a big flag. and Everyone had flags. <laughs> there. <Yeah. laughs> so, no, there right. were people ripping flags off of grounds just so they can wave it. <laughs> yeah. What the fuck? Yeah. Serious, though? Yeah. 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 The it's interesting. Room. It's interesting. I've never been to one before. Same, first time. Yeah. 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 Would, you, would you go again? Yeah. Uh, personally, no. <laughs> but it was a good experience. It's a good, yeah, yeah. No, it's like being with the home fans, isn't it? If you go support Arsenal and you're an Arsenal supporter, you go with the Arsenal fans, it's all like-minded people. You all shout right. together. You and that's what that is. I don't know how many how many new voters you get out of that. How many people change and say, "Oh, I was going to vote for Brazil National, but I seen that that political event. Now I think I'll now vote. it's changed me. I'll, yeah, I'm going to go and vote I'm for changed man, yeah. whoever, Anwar. <laughs> I don't think that happens. I mean, because you're you're vote you're you're speaking to the converted, aren't you? Preaching to the converted is what they say. Exactly, it? which is why I don't yeah. see the point. Right. I, I, to a certain extent, I felt like that too. I mean, yeah. it was nice though that all these like-minded people could get together right. and have a good, a feel-good feeling. Yeah, yeah. But from a political perspective of getting people to vote for you, it's not going to help. It's not going to make yeah. much difference. Exactly. I wouldn't. I wouldn't have thought. And yeah, yeah. I mean, you're, you're holding an event in Sagambut. Yeah. Right. You're getting people from TTDI, Damansara, all surefire victory yeah. people all coming in. You know they're going to vote for you. Exactly. And everyone's cheering for the same cause. Yeah, we were all aligned on this even before the event. <laughs> the event <laughs> has changed nothing. Unless right. you brought a BN friend of yours. Hey, bro, you, no. you want to go for pizza? That, that's the thing. That's, that is the thing, isn't it? That is the thing. It's like going to, in England, they have the Labour conference. If you go to the Labour conference, uh -huh. then you're a Labour party. You belong to the Labour party. Yeah. You're a Labour party voter. So they just go on stage and then they... Everyone's clapping, clap, 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 clap. And it's the same with the Conservatives. Mm. But it doesn't actually really bring any new new, new blood in because you, you, yeah. It's, it's basically right. a social It was still joke. nice though, but it was still, I mean, they do all over the world. I was asked to go to one when I was in America. There was a guy I was sharing with, wow. sharing, that, sharing the house. And he was like very into the Republican Party. But to go to, to it would have been George Bush at that time. Yeah. To go to one of the Republican Party things, sure. you have to sign a the piece rally. of paper saying that you are going to be voting for the... No yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? And uh, I That's insane. Yeah, I didn't want to do that. Because they don't want people who go in there who aren't converted, you know, right. who aren't part of their thing. So it's not really a political discussion, as, as it wasn't last night, really, it was it? No. Yeah. It's, it's just... So I didn't, I didn't really want to go, but it was nice to go to the one last night. And yeah, obviously. it's a nice feel yeah. good place. Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. 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 Wow. But like you say, there was, it was, there was. Uh, it's really quite uh, pointless if you think about it. Yeah. Did they have free food? No, utilitarian. No. no. In fact, I donated money. What the heck? Yeah, yeah. Why would you around, donate money? They were giving a, they had a thing come round with 
donating yeah, money yeah. and then I bought four t-shirts because I was you know with people I thought I'd buy them t-shirts right yeah I mean you so might as well like, you're there right yeah so that was yeah. like a hundred ringgit for a hundred ringgit for I've a t-shirt got, I was going to wear it today I thought this will impress because I know have you seen your, your guest list yeah. <laughs> I'm actually impervious to who like I, I really believe that personally yeah this area where we are voting for Sapute I'm actually not a fan of Theresa Kok personally because I feel like there has been not enough development. Right. It's not enough. I feel like maybe I maybe I demand too much or maybe there is no progress for me to see. You know? And if there was progress, I don't think it's enough. That's how personally I feel about it. Okay. However, I will disclose how I voted for her because it's for the greater good. I just want Pakatan Harapan to be back because I feel like maybe they need a chance, another chance because of COVID and everything, right? And how Tun M resigned and how that specific like no, line no, of events it, happened. It, yeah, it played out very badly. Right. It? And yeah, I don't yeah. think maybe they had the full term to show what they could do. Well, it's nice to have an opposition that's that's got the potential to govern as opposed to just having a yeah. permanent, one, one permanent yeah. government and then an opposition that doesn't really yeah. have yeah. any voice. So it's, I mean, because it makes for a healthier... Competition. Yeah, yeah, yeah a healthier yeah. environment. It keeps one... Keeps them on their toes a little. Yeah, bit and I think that's so what it, that, what need what they need, right? Yeah, they do. They do. They need, gives a bit. Th- everything's got a bit more perspective then, at least. Do you think at that time when you were in Malaysia, mm. the sentiment was was different, where a lot of people are more conservative, or do you think do you think it's the same now? I think it was always the same from the point really of view, from from the point of view that people had their their. Factions of yeah, factions of who they were and weren't voting for, and it was done by. I mean, Doctor Mahathir's thing is was it race, religion, and something else? He, he's is is what he puts down for Kedar and for mm. Lankawi. So that was always part of it. And there are people who, like you say, how many? Well, I was sitting beside a guy called Tarek, and he was a Malay. Mm-hmm. But as you said, you've seen probably six, and you were, and there was hundreds of people there. So it was the so pH tends to be. Non Bumi Putra, yeah, and it shouldn't be. People should do it on policies, not on their race. Not but, based but, on race. but everything gets dragged into it. You yeah, know? race always yeah. gets dragged into it. It does. Yeah. It's and it's a bit of a shame that it can't well, you're, be you're, dragged out a little bit more, and then people just continue say, to do the same. It's it's well, it's, a, it's a part of the legacy issue, right? You're trying to overthrow a policy that's tied to race. Yeah. So you have to be racial yeah. about how you revise the policy. <laughs> well, so, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm not saying you can't, but yeah. it's, it's, it's a shame. It's a shame that, that, it's that, the that same. is, that, that, that is, that is a, a, a feature of the Definitely. Or, or such a strong feature. Yeah. You know? And but people don't really identify as Malaysian. Even, yeah. they do, as Chinese, Malaysian, Indian, Malaysian, or Malay, as opposed to... And th- at the same time, you're trying to go bo- bo- Bole, Malaysia. Mm, <laughs> Malaysia, Bole. <laughs> Malaysia, Bole, yeah. And it's and it's and there's a lot of friction there. It would be nice if that could be dissipated over time where people really were Malaysian. It would, yeah. It would be nice. Yeah. But that maybe is a dreamland. I don't think it happened over the last 20 years. I don't think it's changed that much. Right. I, I, I don't... Well, you're asking me... I wasn't a politician. I was working at Lotus, you know. So, But I don't but think But the feel, so. you know, like yeah. the feel... Yeah, but people do have... It's the same. Uh, when I took a friend of mine, who we'll called Boris, well, I won't mention his name on, on here, well, I took him to the Irish Embassy when I was th- trying to get my project off the ground. The The Irish were the marketers for a, a, a Formula, not Formula One, but a Formula of racing. Mm. And Alex Young was there and a guy called Sam Bird was there. And uh, I didn't talk to him, I should have done really, but mm-hmm. I, went, I went with this Malay guy who... When he's down at Tenku, you know, where we used to have the hostel, it's full of, as we said, you know, the illegal parking attendants, <laughs> few triads, massage girls. A few uh, triads. Uh, it was, uh, <laughs> and, he was, and he was totally comfortable. And I took him to this Irish embassy. And because he was the only Malay there, he went into a kind of a, a funk. Oh, the food might not be halal. Da, da, and oh. he, and, and he's, he's a very outgoing, friendly guy. I just thought, is he doing this on purpose or does he really feel this? Because he's been in situations where he has been the only Malay, right. like, you know, in that situation. And then, and all the people surrounding him were probably a lot, quite a lot dodgier than the ones that were at the embassy. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so there is, there is. And then I had a, a friend who used to train me called Albert. He used to live on uh, Jalan Alua. He used to have a, tra- yeah. a, a, a and he's an ex, he was an ex Muay Thai guy. Ex-Muay very, Thai. very, very nice bloke. 
he's not at all violent. I mean, he was violent. He was, <laughs> but, he was but, violent within the. <laughs> but, but he uh, he he ended up getting diabetes, and when he got his, he lost his legs in the end. And he said to me when he got taken to the hospital, he said, "Oh, because it was a Malay centric hospital. Mm -hmm. Oh, they're probably going to try and kill me. I'm a Chinaman." And he and 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 Albert would talk to a Malay, a Christian, a Buddhist. He was very very open minded. And I, but the Mormon, but some, yeah, sometimes people kind of go. So right. people do. Excuse me, I'm spitting here. No, it's people okay. People surprisingly feel threatened in situations where you kind of go, "Where are you coming from? They're not going to try and kill you in a hospital, mate." They're not. They're, they're and, trying and to do yeah, the opposite, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and like we'll call him Boris, you know, when he was in the Irish embassy, they weren't going to go like and give him a pork sandwich and yeah, and you know, and put Guinness in his lemonade or something. <laughs> it just wasn't going to happen. But they, there seems to be a. I'm, I'm not sure sometimes people do it for a, just to make a little political point or if they've been shenanigan. But there is, a, there is a, an uncomfortable feeling between the races. It does. I feel it, that. On occasions. I feel rightly that. Rightly or wrongly. Yeah. And overcoming that, whether you do it by government policy, by saying, I've got a boomy poop. I think it's a tool. A, I think it's a you know. tool that has been used mm. and the people have been blindsided with this. Because if you look in the past and if you yeah. really look at the ads and yeah. the movies. Right. You know, a lot of the, the Malays at the time used to drink. I mean, they wouldn't eat pork. Right. But it's for some reason like forbidden to eat pork, but it's okay to drink alcohol at that time. Right. Like a lot of them, like for example, you know, to, uh, the first prime minister of Malaysia, mm. Tunku Abdul Rahman, used to drink Guinness and play poker all night. Right. You know? Sounds like a fun guy, to be honest. Yeah, he sounds like a fun guy. Yeah. And he was playing poker and all that during May 13, and he didn't know. Right. When it all, when it all, Bro, well, you can correct me if I'm wrong in the comment section, but this is what I read in read somewhere. Okay, mm. and was he the first prime minister? Yeah, he was the first after independence. Yeah, and got, I've read a book about like Malaysia. I don't. I'm not again. I'm not an expert, but he got a very good write up as being a very genuine, very very genuine yeah. politician. And he didn't have his fingers in the yeah. in the money pot. Yeah. Oh, he was just you know. He was just a, gen a generally yeah. a nice guy yeah, because he's, he's one not, of the few. Be, yeah, not because he drank Guinness and played cards. But no, but he was yeah. a generally a nice guy. But that's yeah. the thing; he was too nice. Mm. Yeah, and because of that, right? I feel that a lot of people people don't know this. So when time like continued, right? Yeah. It became more and more of you're one of us if you don't do it, but you're not one of us if you do drink and whatever, gamble and et cetera, right? It's strange because it's become more conservative over time. And I found this very shocking when I saw a video yeah. of, do you know who P. Ramley is? Yeah, P. Ramley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah the this famous maker. guy, right? Yeah. And he was acting in this short movie or film or something. It was in black and white. And uh, yeah, really in events, we were doing this thematic thing where, you know, it's like the old kampong days and you were supposed to have P. Ramley singing. And when I saw this video, I saw... Malay women showing off all their arms and legs in short shorts and all that. And I'm just like... No, it has changed. That has changed, yeah. No, I remember... That's so weird. When uh, Some of the people that I was friendly with when I was over here staying in that hostel, they were Malay and they showed me pictures of their family going back a generation. And they weren't going around in miniskirts or anything like that. But I mean, they like, were definitely less conservative in their dress than they are today. Mm. Today, they yeah. are like yeah. covered... Maximus, yeah. Yeah. and I, I, I don't, I don't blame them or anything. I think if it's your own, your yeah. own agenda, you want to do it, then do it, right? Yeah. But I really feel like they're pressured to do it. I really feel that there is a pressure because I know a few of my friends who in high school who are very open about like, oh, you know, I like this guy, and a guy also would be, I like this girl, right. and the moment we're adults, whoa, man, I don't know what happened. It's almost as if a switch just went off, and then everybody just like conservative. It's so weird. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, that has, in that sense, it has, yeah, over the years. I think I agree with you. That's like, why I asked that question. Yeah, like, yeah, what's the sentiment not, like? Not, you know? not in the last 20 years, though. I think last 20 years, there was still, when I went to Proton, nearly all the girls wore, wore headdresses. Uh -huh. uh, one called Shah, you weren't allowed to shake her hand because she was married. See? Uh, but that was 20 years ago. But she was a very nice lady, incidentally. I liked Shah, but, but that was a no-no. If yeah. you put your hand out, she weren't going to shake it. But Damn. and there was only one girl who worked in the workshops as a you know like a mechanicy type job, and she didn't. She was the only girl there who didn't wear a headdress. So even that was twenty years ago. Yeah. So that's it's. I, I that it's the, the first way. time that handshake thing happened to me was in the US. 
Oh, really? Yeah. Mm. I went to the US and there was a Malaysian student gathering thing. Mm. And Najib was there. He was giving a speech and I was just there for free food because I was like, fuck yeah, that's free food, right? Oh. And I'm a poor college student. <laughs> and then there was a whole like, oh, let's go and take a photo with Najib. And I'm just like, ah, you know, I'm not going to take a photo with Najib. I'm just going to go out. I'm just going to leave. So I left, right? But as I was leaving and then I bumped into a few Malaysians that were li- uh, nearby or some shit like that. And they were from ADP, which was where, uh, where we, we both studied in Taylor's. And I was like, oh my God. I, this year I was talking, I, ca- I caught up with her. And she said, oh, this is my friend. Forgot her name. And I wanted, I reached out my hand to shake her hand and she was like, wow. I was like, I felt rejected. I'm like, what? It's like, hey, bro, she's a girl, bro. She's a girl. I'm like, that doesn't check out. Yeah. In the, in the, uh, it never even crossed my mind that you can't shake a girl's hand if she's, uh, if she's a Muslim, if she chooses not to. But I mean, if yeah. a girl doesn't want to shake her hand, a girl doesn't yeah. want to shake her hand, yeah. right? Yeah. But like, no, no. no but that shocked. Was, yeah, but yeah, I know. That was unusual for me too. But it was only Charles. And she was very, uh, I've got to say, she was a nice girl. She they are nice. nice. It's just yeah, weird, yeah. right? It's yeah, just it weird. is. Yeah, it is. It's a bit that, unusual. You have something that, but you you had to remember it. Because coming from America, there's a, there's a, when I was working in England, it was nearly a whole all male working in the design mm-hmm. side of cars. Then I went to America and it was kind of 30 Really? 40%. I always assumed it would women, be the same. Women, no, it's, no it's, there's a lot of women working over there. But over there at the end of a meeting, you will all shake hands and blah, blah. Yeah. And it was like, I mean, you couldn't be sexual. That was a no-no. Don't get me I wrong. I mean, you just shake but, a hand. But man, obviously, is- when I came to Proton, it was a slightly different scenario. But most of the most of the girls do shake your hands, to be honest with you. Just if, if they One don't, two, you have to yeah. remember... Just culturally, yeah. not to make a, a mistake, you know. Yeah, but uh, yeah. Did Did you feel like there was a huge change when you came from the west to the east to work here? Not really. I mean, from a dress point of view, there was because I always thought the girls when they like when they said that they went off to Sweden. I, as a Westerner, yeah. being a bit ignorant, on it, <laughs> thought they would take the headscarf off, you know, dress as Westerners and go off and have a good old time. But they, you know, they'd say, oh, "I've been to Sweden," and they'd be there standing in Gothenburg or wherever. And then the, the, the whole the whole stuff. So they obviously they keep it up through their whole life. Yeah, and, yeah, I, yeah. and I assume that they wouldn't want to. That's because of the Western thinking, you know. Right. I'm, it's not many Muslims in England where I live. So uh, so that was that. But yeah, but it, was, it it wasn't a big deal. They're still nice people. I mean, they are great you just, people. You They're just had people. to remember a little bit of etiquette, you know. But that was all. It's weird. But it wasn't anything evil or bad. Or I didn't think that they were going to turn around and you know get the Sharia court. The, Drag me off anywhere and beat me up anyway. <laughs> so, yeah. Did you feel like when you were working in Malaysia, right, mm. there was a big cultural change at the office, in the office, like are there certain work practices that were extremely different? Because our conversation yesterday yeah. with Mei Ping was about how a lot of Asians, when they're very passive, so a lot of Asians wouldn't challenge, they wouldn't question, they would just obey, say yes, do the, do the task at hand. Whereas a lot of Westerners, they would approach that problem. It's like, you don't like me, right? I just want to know why. I want to clarify. I want to clear the air. Do you? Did you feel that transition? Did you feel that change when you were working in, like, in the US well, and Europe and all? I must say, when I was over here, and when I worked in Germany, mm-hmm. Germans didn't always treat me the best. Sometimes there was a little bit of a thing going on between Germany and England. Okay, and Germans thought everyone wanted to be a German. What? Well, no, because it was a German car company. I was working for Mercedes Benz and uh-huh. Volkswagen and stuff like that. And I did. F- I, I, I mean, I, I've got. It sounds a bit. Some of my best friends are Germans. Oh, <laughs> it's so okay, clear, John. Yeah. If they're your best but friends, they're gonna. Judge if they're your they're, best friends, they're gonna understand. No, no, but <laughs> I didn't always enjoy that experience. But in England, it was the same. It's, I think it's people are people. It's just they have a different reason for disliking you or liking you. But I mean, for example, some people, when I was talking to a recruiter for an old company that's now gone out of business, she said there was a guy called Terry White and he wouldn't work with me again. And I said, why? He said, he's not British enough. Wow. I said, I said, what does he mean I'm not British enough? <laughs> and she said, she, said, queen. she said, I don't know. <laughs> so obviously someone's got a... Uh, Personal... No, no, no. It's, 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 some people think to be Chinese, you have to do... Have to have chopsticks. You have to eat yeah. rice. You have to do this. You have to. Well, if you didn't, if you ate potatoes <laughs> and and you use a knife fork. and fork, right. they might. Andrew might say, "Well, I'm not working with him." Say, so "Why not? He's not really Chinese because his stereotype isn't being met by you." Mm. And that happens all over the world. And people are, are 
when we worked when I worked in Germany, I was working on the American side with the Germans. I, I could speak a bit of German. So oh, that, sure. that worked out all right. It was good. And I got on all right with the Germans. Don't get me wrong, I did. I got on very well with them. But there was always a little bit of a a thing between the Americans and the Germans, who were the better engineers. The Germans say, well, we've got BMW, et cetera, mm. et cetera. What have you got? You know, Chrysler, <laughs> Ford. <laughs> you know, Ford. <laughs> so, so there was always that as well. And that's, that's it's just normal. It's just normal. Whether it's right or not is another thing totally. So there was there no was. culture shock when you came to work here? They were, they was different, but it wasn't... It, my culture shock was more working with the expats who were over here. They were getting up, really. They were getting up to all kinds of different, you know, bits and pieces. Which I'm not going to mention on the radio, but they, <laughs> but they, uh, they, they were different. Certainly, I had more trouble with my my fellow expats than I ever did with any of the uh, locals. The locals, yeah, of any race or religion, uh, much more. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. Mm. I find that so weird. I, I I feel a lot of Asians would beg to differ when they would yeah. go to the West. Like I know a few of my friends who work in London right now in Toyota. Right. Weird, right? Like working in a Western country for an Asian company. Right. It's strange. Yeah, a bit strange. Yeah. But uh, she says, wow, it's so different here. You know, people respect your time so much. You get to go back. Mm. You know, your boss respects you. If you tell them like, you know. Oh yeah, but don't, don't, don't you think bosses respect, don't you respect people when you, when you work with them? I respect them, but I don't know yeah. whether, like, I mean, I'm not but saying you, you all would never, of them. You would never say, Andrew, you did a good job today. Oh, I don't think that happens a lot in Asia actually. No? Very seldom. Really? In a corporate That's setting. Yeah. No, do you watch do, football? I do watch football, yeah. Uh, uh, club? Oh, I don't really have it. I've swapped like, like a lot of Malaysians. <laughs> I started off when I was very young, Leeds United. Okay. Because everyone, yeah. there was a final. My dad's a Leeds and guy. And Chelsea, like, lost, said, and everyone wanted, I was. I should yeah. be contrarian, so I went with Leeds to the Chelsea. And then when I got older, we had a footballer who was married to a, a girl who lived across the street from me, played for Tottenham. Oh, Frank, shit. Frank Saul. So then I started to follow Tottenham and I used to keep all the cuttings for Tottenham. And <laughs> then uh, it works out that Arsenal went to my school to find out how good I was at football. There's a story to that, but I wasn't very good at football, sadly. <laughs> so uh, okay. then I thought, well, as, as they took an interest in me, you know, albeit... So Arsenal. So I, I not currently. Like, I, yeah, but Arsenal and Tottenham are supposed to hate each other. But yeah. I, don't, I don't hate Tottenham. I'm not. I'm not your stereotypical yeah, Arsenal, Arsenal right. supporter. No more. I'm not your stereotypical British, according to some people either, right. or Irish person, or <laughs> American, or whatever you, whatever you want to call. I'm not Arsenal enough. Do you know yeah. Roy Keane? Roy Keane. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So yes. you know, there's the this Irishman. Yeah. There is yes, a from Cork. There is a, a stereotypical Roy Keane comment in the comment section in every YouTube video. And in Asia, because I'm going back to that whole like, do you do, don't doesn't your boss praise you? Like, good job, John. Good job, Andrew. Yeah. Bro, in Asia, it's basically every boss is a Roy Keane. That's your job. You're supposed to do. That. No, <laughs> yeah, it's tough. Love, no. debatably love, but tough. Yeah, uh, I don't know. No. I don't love Drew. I, yeah, think I think it's, it's just, just tough. No, I think people appreciate being told they've done a good job, though. They oh, do. for sure, for sure. And, and, uh, and you're losing out if you don't tell them. I mean, don't t- don't get me wrong. It can also get a little bit patronising if you're just doing it because you know you tell everyone that they're doing a good job. Yeah. But if people sometimes do, when they do, do yeah. yeah, yeah. Why not? Why don't? Why not tell them you've done a good job? What do you, what do you, what do you think, Maybe? Say, say I appreciate it. You know? I think Maybe would agree with our general assessment that Asians mm. don't compliment. People. But do you think she would agree that you should say good job? Yeah, I think she really? would. Probably. I don't know. I feel I, like I think there's more upside than downside. What's the harm in that? Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, if you work hard, say say you, you get a job, I'll give you yeah. a job, and you work all weekend, and you you put in the extra hours, you split 15 hours a day for two or three <laughs> days, you come up, we have the meeting, it goes off really well. I appreciate the fact that you've just done 45 hours work over your weekend, and I say, good job, guys. Are you going to go, oh, Asians don't do that. I don't know. I don't, know. No, Asians. <laughs> I don't think Asians do that. Do you think Asians do that? They would. No, it's it, it's one question to think to say to ask whether they do it in general, and another to ask whether it's a good or bad thing. Oh, but do you think Asians do it? No, definitely not. Yeah, but it's a good thing not. to do. Yeah, it's a good thing to do. I do that all the time. Right, but I don't think most Asians do it. Yeah, definitely not. <laughs> I will always say, I, I, I didn't notice. I didn't notice. I didn't notice. I, I was directly at one time over all of the local engineers who were mostly Asian, and I used to get on all right with them. But I wasn't their direct boss, but I used, if right. I... Spoke, when you see something commendable, I mean, for yeah, sure, you would give yeah. them a pat on the back, say good yeah. job and all that, right? Yeah. yeah. But I think, strictly speaking, mm. if you were to be in a very traditional setting, 
stereotypical accounting major now working in the big four, 100% you're never going to get a good job. <laughs> I mean, I work in a Chinese company. They don't certainly don't compliment That's people. the Far huh? East already. Yeah. yeah, he works for TikTok. So oh, definitely, dear. definitely yeah. no good job. Just oh, right. you, you're supposed to do that. How the... How do? <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, no, I, I agree. It's, it is your job, but it's still nice that so someone here, appreciates right? it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. And not so. everyone does a good job all the time. Some people do the absolute minimum all mm. the time. Have you, you have know? you heard of that uh, that term? What's that called? Quiet quitting. Have you heard of? Yeah, that? yeah, yeah, yeah. Where you do the minimal amount. And just, just to, to tick along by. without yeah. getting sacked. I mean, I've done that in my life before when I was younger. I think a lot of us do that. You know, it's just whether you bit, care to admit it. Bit irresponsible. But as you get older, I'm less irresponsible, if you will. But there's, I think everyone's done that in their life at some point. Because you should, I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure yeah. you feel some sort of burnout in that week. Yeah. To say that you have never quiet quitted is being very hypocritical. It's not really yeah. a new a new idea anyway. It's, it's just people putting people it into words. Doing it for decades yeah. since yeah. the dawn of time. Right? Yeah. It's just cruising. That's right? it, yeah. I yeah. mean, I've had people work for me where I I would, and it doesn't actually go in your favour, but if I know that you can do a job in two days and do it bang on, and I've got to present it to a client, yeah. I'll give you loads and loads of work. If I know you're going to spend three weeks and it's not going to be a good job, you'll get less and less work. Yep. So I'll, I'll actually empower you to quietly quit yes. as your boss. Right. <laughs> you know, if, if I can't fire you, if I'm in an environment where I can't get rid of, yeah, yeah, yeah. then... That's so exactly that's, right. That's just life, isn't it? That is yeah. life in any society. Yeah, man. You know, and arguably in all cultures, I'm pretty sure everybody mm. is quite quitted as well. Mm. Yeah, so you should do a subpar job. Yeah, you're incentivized to do it, right? Less work, whoa, same whoa, pay. Whoa, whoa, right? Whoa, your cost yeah. per work. I mean, when you get up. your when you get your comments section on this, not not me specifically, but right. in general, when someone puts in a positive, oh, that was a good. I'd really enjoyed that. That podcast was, or whatever. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, it makes you feel better. And it's a lot better than someone saying, you know. Oh man, you know you that. Know, that don't that give up the day job, guys. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, okay, you know, so, do you know there was a comment, yeah. right? In the Okay, right. so you know that Mahate podcast had shitload of comments like, good job, guys, you know, whatever. Yeah. I feel like you could have pressed more, some crit, you know, criticism, something. But you know, there was a comment in there that was like straight up violent. Really? Violent, as in punch your lights out type violent. Punch your lights out, bro. This guy threatened to burn our, like, I will find you and I will kill your whole family type of thing. Joking. Really? Bro. Uh, well, really? Then don't tell me it was an anonymous. Uh, it's an anonymous. I tried, I deleted the first comment. Because yeah. I don't believe stuff. in that violent shit. You know, there's some sad people out there, really. I, I mean, yeah, I, I do understand the anonymous thing to a certain extent, but I, if I ever put a comment on somewhere, I always put John Mansfield and you know it's from me. And, but I'm not. <laughs> But I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. Uh, I'm not gonna go like you know, Harry the Hatchet, so no one knows it is, and then threaten you. I think yeah. that people who do that, it says more about them than it does you. Hundred percent. I but I, I literally feel you. fear. You know. Yeah. So when you put out content like this, and people yeah. see our faces on the camera, yeah. they hear our voices. And you know, if you listen to every episode at this point, you're gonna start picking up on information. Does this guy really live in Satapak? You know, that's not really Sapute. Mm. You know. And then when they start to pick up all these things, they find you one day and then they see you, I'm afraid. I don't know how these people do it on camera and then they don't feel afraid. I don't yeah. feel afraid. Uh, you don't feel afraid? No, no and I think a lot of them, if you actually met them and talked to them, you would find that they were probably afraid more than you because that's why they're hiding behind this anon thing mm, and giving true. you all a pup. There was a, there was a professional boxer. I think his name's Curtis something or other. He was a professional footballer and he became a professional boxer. And someone started doing that to him threatening his family and he actually found out who they were and went round their house and then he oh, got the shit. biggest apology of his life out of them you know they were all oh no, sorry I didn't really mean that. I didn't, I didn't think <laughs> I didn't think threatening your life would actually you know frighten you, you know? so I, I don't I think it's just people being absolute a-holes who do that and I can't believe anyone wants to kill you to be honest not seriously that's someone who's a sad little shit sitting in a little bedroom on their own right got nothing better to do and that's that, that's their little yeah. kick in life I'd be amazed if they actually followed through on it. That's not saying that you, you know, uh, you wouldn't there are, there invite are odd, it. There are odd people out there saying <laughs> you wouldn't invite yeah. it, right? No. But at the same time, I don't know. When I read it, it's like, mm. I think it's the first time we've ever gotten death threats. You know? Huh. Yeah. First time ever. Yeah. I. I just there's a very very slim chance this guy's gonna fall through with it. So why? 
At this yeah, point, we're we challenging him. You might get done. You only die once. Yeah, well, he, might, <laughs> he might be good at it. Death, death is a new thing, you know that. That's the, yeah, uh, it's yeah, the new, that's that's the new yeah, thing. It's a new thing. Yeah. 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 Unless he pumps water into my stomach, yeah. stomps on me. Yeah, and we're all gonna we're all gonna face it one day. That's yeah, it. that's true. That's the that's the, uh, that's that's the biggie. All right, yep. I can yep. feed into this new yeah this new degree program. This new death degree. Oh, okay. So I know. I think we're gonna wrap up soon. Right, okay. but we have uh, okay. So what we usually do is we have a question from the previous guest. All right, and the guest will now ask you, and then you're gonna pass me a question, so I will ask the next guest. Oh, I didn't realize that bit. Yeah, so yes. there is going to be like a, a conversation amongst guests. Okay, right. so I'm gonna. And I haven't got a question at the moment, but carry on. It's all right. We got time. <laughs> yeah. We got dinner. Yeah. You can yeah. you can think about it while we're having dinner later. Oh, all right, right. right? Oh, so, so I don't got... have to do it now. No, you don't have to do it. Okay. Oh, that's yeah. cool. That's cool. All yeah. Right. Okay. So, where the fuck is that fucking question? Okay. The question is, if you could redo your career, what is the one thing you won't take for granted? I wouldn't take for granted. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't take for granted... The opportunities were thrown at me that I didn't realise were such good opportunities, and I just thought everyone got these opportunities. I got I got apprenticeship with Falls. They trained me up to the eyeballs, and all I wanted to do was get out of college because I hated it. <laughs> and they, and you know what I mean. Then I got trained so that I could go travel around the world by a guy called Jack Danton. So he gave me the skill set to do that, and I didn't really care. I thought, well, everyone gets that, and they don't. Then I got a, I left after a. I'd, I'd reached the, the point where I, get a, I now get a pension from Fords. If I'd left a month earlier, I wouldn't have done. I didn't know that at the time. I oh, just, shit. I, I just wanted to go to America, you know. And I took it all for granted. And really, I've been so lucky. Everything. I've, I, a lot of things for granted. You take your parents for granted. You take a multitude of things for granted. And really, I suppose every day you should wake up and say, well, I've got a lot to be grateful for. Everyone should. Because most, not everyone, but most people, apart from your death threat, we're all, <laughs> we're all fortunate, and you don't realise how fortunate you are. Indeed, you, you take it for granted, and it's and it is taking things for granted. Is, is we all do it, and I'm very, very guilty of it over the years. I think all of you us know? are, you know, yeah, and yeah. you only truly, truly yeah. appreciate it when it's gone. Yeah, 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 yeah. You should got to be thankful, haven't you? I'm not saying some people are thankful, you know, thankful for the glass. Thanks for that. Thank. Uh, but I mean, in general terms, sure, yeah, you know, yeah, that makes sense. I think yeah. it comes with age. Like when I was younger, I used to take things for granted. Mm. You know, like the the meal on your table and everything like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember my my sister sent her kids to private school, mm-hmm. and it cost a fortune. And we was behind this bus, and the bus it said fifteen thousand a year for a bus driver's job, which is the same amount of money that was spent that on, on my nephew's uh, education. I said, yeah, yeah. I said, your, your your education's costing as much as that that guy driving that bus, and he's bringing up three kids and looking after a wife on it. And he just kind of looked at me like, yeah, what's, what's that got to do with me? Yeah. So there was there was there was no, you know. Jeez. But but it's, that's nothing against him. He's a nice kid. It's just but, like over time, I think. He yeah, would. you do. You forget how lucky you are, or you don't appreciate how lucky you are, or or you just take for granted how lucky you are. Yeah. And then yeah, you man. shouldn't. You shouldn't really. You know. You shouldn't. I feel like a. You know Auntie Chuck? I always took Auntie Chuck for granted. Mm. Uncle Chuck, Auntie Chuck. For sure, I think we both did. Yeah, man. Uh, she, was, she and uh, her husband, Uncle Chuck, used to look after us when we were kids. And I always used to think she would always be there. Mm. You know? And one day it was mm. so sudden and uh, I got the news when I was uh, working abroad. I was in Indonesia. And I got the news that she passed away. And it was just heart failure. She was oh, on a holiday with her husband in China, up in the mountains, no reception. And she just, the heart just- Gave up on her and that was it. Yeah. And then I, did, I, I, I just cried for like the whole morning. I right. didn't know what to do. I don't even know how I felt that way. I just, it just- Yeah, yeah, well, you're close to someone. It's crazy, it's, man. Well, I mean, that is death, isn't it? It's, it's not the person who dies most of the time. They've yes. gone off to wherever, right. Nirvana or, yeah. you know. Alicia up there or Allah or whoever. Yeah. But the people who are left here- Are the ones that feel. That, yeah, of course you do, yeah. And that's the whole death thing, isn't it? It's not the person who's dead, it's, it's the people who have to deal with the death. Yeah. Yep. Who, who, who need the support and the help. That is, yeah. <sighs> yeah. It's very true. Yeah, it is, yeah. yeah, man. Well, I'm glad you got over it anyway, John. You seem to have- I, th- I think I, I, try, I try to live life as much as I can because I know what I, ha- what I have right now is limited, right? Everybody has their time. 
and you might as well make full use of your time when you're still alive. So oh, yeah, 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 I think it's a it's a it's a joy that we get to feel yeah. sad. So if you don't feel sad, I think that's when you're missing on being true. a human being, right? True, 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 true. Yeah, yeah you're a psychopath, as they say. Um any last words from your side? No, thanks. I'm very grateful. For you two guys <laughs> nah. for giving me the opportunity to come in here and no, thank you for coming. go on your show. John, I, is an I, ultimate I hope, pleasure. I hope it, uh, it's a successful show for you guys and you get positive and uh, no death threats. As opposed to no, <laughs> no death, death threats. threats. <laughs> yeah. Maybe the layman at me. I can, I can handle the occasional death threat. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry me too much. All right. It's a pleasure, John. Thank Thanks, you so guys. much. Thanks. Lovely yeah. meeting you. You can head over for dinner. And your Chan. And your Chan. <laughs> yes. Thanks, Chan. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta give him an English name. That's the yeah. thing. He God. has an English name. What's his English name? Fred. Close. What? Four letters. So close. <laughs> what's your What's your English name? <laughs> oh. Oh, it's a lie. That's a lie. Oh, it's his name. It's Christ. Uh, as soon as the camera stopped rolling, he started lying. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> How convenient. <laughs>